Hey guys, Vinci Gamer back and we're back to uh, Sony Z Prince of Azkaban, Harry Potter, Goblet of Fire reviews, guys. Loving this book so much. Some great chapters today, guys. It really feels like normal Hogwarts, you know. There's certain little things going around here or there, or certain people, I should say. But it certainly feels like you're lovely. You get them every now and then, guys. Even later on into the books, you just get like a little a couple of chapters just about classes and relationships and everything. And it's all such good stuff. Seriously, it's such a weird thing where the the the, move, the, the books I should say are, are structured in a quite consistent way the movies obviously are not so much but you have Harry with the Dursleys um some sort of escape ha happy escapism like you know me being died up Diagon Alley or um the Quidditch World Cup and everything then the journey to Hogwarts Draco comes in and has <laughs> People. I really like that some people liked my idea that Hermione and Draco would get on perfectly fine if Harry and Ron weren't there. I really like that idea. Obviously not so much. Um, uh, and then to Hogwarts, the, you know, the ceremony, which we find out something's been going on with Harry with the ceremonies guys, which completely had me confused. I had to go check exactly what was going on with the sorting hat ceremony, I should say. We'll, we'll get to it. Um, and then into the lesson, seeing all the teachers again. It's such a lovely feeling, you know. It really, really is. Um, and so, in fact, it almost feels like you know. But remember when you're back at, when, when you're at school? And well, this certainly was the case for me, at least. And I, I loved summer holiday everything, guys. Just like you know, not being at school or anything. And then you think, oh god, it's within two weeks of, of going back. It's gonna be horrible. You know, like you know, really, really dreading it and everything. And then finally, it's the first day and everything. And then you get back, but then there is this sort of feeling of. Oh, we're back to it again. It, 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 it's that feeling that, that the, the, these chapters give us today. We, we, we did uh, Try Wizard Tournament and Mad Eye Moody chapters. And so, lovely stuff. We meet a couple new characters, one of which, pretty sure, wasn't in the movies. <laughs> pretty sure. Um, and yeah, they're great stuff. Like I said, I guess you could say almost transitional chapters, but I think they are very often the best. I, I love them so much. And so, uh, without further ado, guys, let me do my waffle about the book club. Guys, if you're new here, hi, I'm Veggie. Um, I have just put out another video about these book reviews, guys. So if you'd like to go check that out, please do. It's just clarifying a couple of things and, uh, and yeah, it, I, I think it could be useful for, for you to watch. And so I would have po posted that before this, I should say. But yes, we do these Harry Potter book reviews where we break down pretty much every other line of the, of the book and discuss them in depth, which I just love doing so much, guys. It's such a fun process for me to do. And if you wish to be a part of the videos, you can back the Patreon for as little as you want and get access to the Harry Potter book club, uh, where uh, you can give me your thoughts on the chapters, your opinions, your questions. Uh, about the chapters that we're covering and then I read them out in the second half of the video So if, you, if that sounds like the sort of thing which you'd like to check out you can pay as little as you want uh, on, on the patreon and get access to everything that's on there and so if that sounds like the sort of thing which you'd be interested in please do Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel still going strong on those channels as well on those channels on the patreon as well um, but yes that's there if you so wish to be a part of it guys but I guess we'll keep this this intro nice and short so let's get over to well first of all I'll, I'll say this straight away Jonas thank you so much for the side panels uh Raider Max thank you so much for the summaries that I read out at the start of the chapters it saves me a lot of time as do, as do the side panels thank you you guys really do help out these videos so so much and now without further ado <laughs> in English without further ado let's get over to chapter 12 of Goblet of Fire the Triwizard Tournament See, that's only four minutes long. If I feel like this, I usually talk for like at least another five minutes. But no, let's get over to the chapter. Chapter 12, the Tri-Wizard Tournament, which I've started to uh, simulate, simulate, that's right, uh, to TWT. Although that doesn't make much sense because Tri-Wizard is one word. Either way, I guess you could say Triple T because it's the... Anyway, who cares? Right, the Professor, the professor McGonagall. Hang on one moment. I don't know if you could hear that, hear that then, but Woozle started barking. I, I went and checked on her. I think she must have seen a cat or something. I, I, I got her when she was like around a, a, a year and a half old. We we think she was abandoned. 
Um, and um, she definitely had never seen a cat before up until that point. Because when she first saw a cat, she was terrified. <laughs> she wouldn't go anywhere near one. Anyway, that's different now. Uh, the... Professor McGonagall escorts all the students, including Wet Ron, thanks Peeves, Wet Ron, up to the Great Hall, where the Sorting Hat sings a song that is not the one that Harry remembers from his first year. Harry notices that at the teacher's table there is an empty seat where, which must be for the new Dada Professor, Defense Against the Dark Arts. After the sorting is over, the feast starts and Hermione is outraged to find out that they have been served by house elves this whole time. Once the feast is over, Dumbledore announces that there will be no Quidditch this year. When, like an RKO out of nowhere, the door bursts open and a strange looking man walks in. That's a wrestling term, guys. Max and I are wrestling fans. We do sometimes talk about it. In fact, it's the Royal Rumble tonight, which is very, very exciting. Randy Orton is in the main... Well, not in the main event, but he's, he's, he's uh, going for the title against Roman Reigns. L.A. Knight, yeah. And uh, AJ Styles. Roman's winning that. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, uh, the headmaster introduces everyone to the new defense guitar art teacher, Mad-Eye Moody. After he takes his seat, Dumbledore goes on to explain why Quidditch has has been, uh, uh, which has been has been cancelled because of the Tri Wizard, Wizard tournament. However, he explains that there will be two other schools, and that one, no one under the age of seventeen may enter, causing Fred and George to be outraged. Once in the common room, the twins are already planning on how to enter. Ron asks Harry if. They are successful. Uh, would he enter, which causes Harry to picture himself winning the whole thing? Thank you so much, Max, for the summary and the wrestling reference. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, I was going to say Trindamir. What is wrong with me today? Jonas! Okay, if you checked out my uh, <laughs> League of Legends reactions recently, guys, you, you'll know who Trindamir is. Anyway, I apologise, Jonas. I don't know where that came from. So, uh, it does mean you're going to live forever, though, apparently. Or well, kind of. I don't understand it. Right! Sorry, Jonas. Right. Peeves, uh, Peeves is dropping water bombs on the group as they come in. They're already completely exhausted, because this storm is massive, quite frankly. Which is interesting, because I... Askerman had a massive storm in the movie, didn't it? And I, I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I can't remember that it was in the book. But, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting that there is this huge storm going on, which is just getting worse and worse as the night goes on. So yeah, Peeves is like uh, dropping uh, water bombs on on the students and everything, which is obviously a very nineties kid sort of, sort of thing to do. I don't know if you have water bombs anymore, you must do. But. Um, <clears throat> I do have here, it's less bad because they're already wet, which is actually his defense as well. McGonagall uh, tells Peeves off. Um, <coughs> she knew, she almost falls over, and, it's, and it says in the book, and this is interesting, because I got a strange image of this now. She grabs Hermione around the neck to steady herself. <laughs> I swear that there is a whole Hermione uh, McGonagall rivalry thing going on, guys. <laughs> I don't, know what, I don't know where I came from. But yeah, the fact that she grabbed him by the neck is right. Just imagine Dumbledore walked in then. Anyway, and, and she's fine. She 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 immediately apologises. Or thanks her. I think she apologises. Uh, Nick is back. Always good to see Nick. Wearing uh, apparently a particularly large ruff, which is uh, keeping his head, for, uh, head, head straight. Um, Nick says good evening. And Harry replies, says who? Um... I gotta say, it's very interesting, and I presume it's the case with. It's very interesting, guys, because I presume it's the case with the other students as well, apart from Ravenclaw, probably. Oh, I don't know much about her, do I? But um, the way the students treat ghosts is very interesting to me, guys. It really is. It's like Nick is uh, a peer, which I always is an equal. Is that a peer? I always get it confused by. No, yeah, I think it is. But an equal. Like, like Nick is one of the kids, you know, someone who they don't need to be particularly polite to or call sir or anything like that. And quite frankly, Harry is being very, he's not being rude. I don't think he's being rude. Um, I think he's, 
if Ron said good evening to Harry, one, that would be strange. But also, Harry would actually say says who if he's having a really bad... Uh, he's, he's joking with Nick, I guess, is the best way of putting it. It's very interesting that, that ghosts are seen in that way. Because I would have thought that they require more respect than... Professors? Probably not. Probably not. But yeah, I would be like Mr. Nick, sir, all the time. I'd be wearing this hat at school. <laughs> um, I guess I guess what it is is that I would have sympathy for Nick, but but the students at Hogwarts are past that because they you know they, they, he's just what he's part of the furniture guys. See, it's very interesting how relaxed this students talk with the ghosts. And like I say, I'm not sure if that'd be the case with the Grey Lady. Is that what she's called? But um. But yeah, maybe we'll find out. I think that a lot of Slytherin are actually scared of the bloody Baron. At least first years. I remember uh, Draco like being a little bit worried about him. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. Anyway, uh, Harry has been... Um... Oh, yes. So, so we have here where... Um... It's not when they're singing. It's, it's Harry realises that he's only ever been to his own sorting hat ceremony. And my brain was like, that cannot be true. Okay, chamber with a car, but surely he was one at the one with Azkaban. He certainly is in the mo in the movie. He's there because they had the whole bit where Dumbledore like says in the movie, um, a, a light can always be found even in the dark in the darkest times. And in my reaction, I went, "No, I can't." <laughs> it's one of my favourite bits of my videos. Ridiculously. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, it turns out, and I, I actually have to look this up, he was blooming unconscious, guys. This is like, you know, with Pomfrey and the chocolate and everything. And so, yeah, that's crazy. The fact that, and I think that even Harry is like, oh, yeah, I haven't actually been to another one of these. Especially with what's coming up with the song, which is very interesting. Um... Lots of reintroductions about how the hall looks, the ceremony, the characters, the professors. It's all very good stuff, guys. It's like it's, it's like it's, it's it's a reintroduction, but done in in a new way. Like saying how uh, how Sprout's hat is sitting on her head and everything, and, and how everyone's behaving. It's all good stuff, guys. It's all good stuff. Um, Colin's back. Excellent. Says that his brother is starting. Dennis as a first year this this year. Um. We get a discussion of families going into houses, guys, and I was blooming rubbing my hands. Now, granted, granted, it's like two lines of dialogue, but it's so good to get this bit of information, guys. And it's not even information, because it's... I guess it's kind of like Hermione's theory, really. Because... Um, because we, I think that Colin says... Yeah, he does. He says, I hope he's in Gryffindor. Which is a very nice big brother. Very nice big brother thing to say. My brothers wouldn't have hoped I'd be in the same house as them. <laughs> I'm the youngest of my family, if you didn't know that, I guess. Um, and, um, and so Harry does think, oh, so he, well, he probably is going to be a Gryffindor. He's like, let's say it's wrong. All your family was, was Gryffindor. Was Molly Gryffindor? I'm going to look that up. If this is like a massive twist, guys, I'm about to spoil myself. I apologise. What house was Molly? It starts with P, doesn't it? Molly Weasley was sorted into Gryffindor. What was she? Was Molly Weasley? Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry. Um. Yeah, she was. She was Gryffindor. Molly's maiden name is Pewitt. I was right, kind of. I got the first letter right, which is not really enough. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> my brother, my, okay, I'm going to read the text. Um, the music from the romantic film they watch in Hollow Ship, which is the Red Dwarf episode, is always in Prisoner Cell Block H. My brother, for some reason, really enjoys watching Prison Cell Block H, guys. I don't know why. I think I think he likes soap opera. I, I think he likes old 90s soap operas a lot. Um, and so, yes. That, that's the message that I just got. That's, that's That summarizes my life, guys. That sort of message. 
um, I also, I, I, I sent him a message last night saying that the, um, that Wayne Manor in Batman 1989 is the same building that they break into at the end of the Great Muppet Caper, which is the only Muppets movie I've seen. And Michael Robbins is on the gates, who is an actor who you may know from a TV show if you're of a certain age, although I wasn't born when it was on. On the buses, there's a character called Arthur in it, who is a miserable bobbins. He, should, he, he could have played Filch brilliantly. Because <laughs> it's such a random tangent. And he, Michael Robbins, the character who plays Arthur, is in one scene of the great Muppet caper um, outside the building, which was also used as Wayne Manor in Batman 1989. I'm a, I'm a millennial, guys. So... The other buses was well before me, okay? In fact, Great Muppet Caper may have been before me as well. Hang on a second. Great Muppet Caper. It was before me. That surprises me. Well, there you go, guys. Have I wasted enough of your time now? Should we get back to the Bloomin' Book Review? I'm so sorry. It starts with sorry. Sorry. Husband Hotel song. Right. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know why you put up with me. Get on with it. Um, so, yeah, Harry like says about how you know all all, all your family are Gryffindor and everything. And Hermione says, well, not, not necessarily. I mean, what about uh, Pravati? Her sister is Ravenclaw. Uh, and Hermione says that they're identical, which they sure aren't in the movie, guys. They they certainly didn't go that route with, with the uh, actors in in the movie. I don't think so. I don't. I. I. I wouldn't even say they were all related, in my opinion. Uh, both very good, though. Both very good. And there are a couple of characters which are really nice, guys, because we're never really meant to have an opinion of them, even in the Yule Ball in the movies. And this might be different in the books, guys. Obviously, because obviously, uh, apparently, Cho's situation is very different. But um, I really appreciate the Patel sisters, sisters, because they're kind of just like a reliable consistency. You know, they're just like you. You always. You see him in the background, I think. I know, I know there's a million other characters that's the case with, but there's something really neutral about them, which I, I do appreciate. They ain't identical twins, so guys, not in the, not in the movie. Um, so, yeah, so it's Hermione, like I said, you know, it's, and you'd think that you know, they're identical, you'd think that would be the case. So I presume that Padma might be slightly more intelligent than Pravati, or Pravati slightly more braver. Well, she doesn't like snakes, does she? She likes, she really likes terrifying clowns, apparently. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I presume that maybe Padma has some sort of interest in some science or something, maybe. Are they pure bloods? They are. I'm pretty sure that they are pure, pure bloods, aren't they? I'm pretty certain they are. Um... Oh, yes, I got down here. Now, this is an inter interesting question, guys. Do Ravenclaws tend to not be very good at divination? I reckon you could write a thesis on that, guys. <laughs> I, I, I think, I'm actually really proud of that question. I reckon that they would tend to not be as good as other houses at divination. And I'm not insulting Shrawley here, guys, because she gets a... She's, she, she does get things right. She just does, guys, you know? And she's not a charlatan. In fact, there's something in the next chapter that she says which kind of proves that she's not a charlatan. I can't remember what it is, but it's, it's in my notes, though. Uh, anyway, I thought that was an interesting question. Do Ravenclaws tend to not do very well at divination? Or do they just not even take it? Although we def we have definitely seen both uh, Patel sisters in the movie in a class. But I still think that Padma was Gryffindor in the movie, guys. Not that it matters. Moving on. McGonagall uh, is about probably supervising the drawing of the entrance way. I've got down here. No spell for that. And then I think about it. No charm for that. It'd be kind of cool. You, you know, like these, um, you don't really have them now because technology is so much better. But you remember like back in the day when you go to a shop in, in winter and you and the doors are, also, the doors are open and it just goes, because it's like hot water being pushed, hot water? Hot air, sorry, being pushed down. To try and block out the cold and everything. It, they must have been so expensive, those machines. Um, would you not have a charm, which just basically gets rid of rainwater? But then it could go wrong and you could, like, 
dehydrate someone horrendously or something. Just go, ah! God, that's horrible. Um, yeah, you'd think there would be a charm. There's an app for that. <laughs> and I, I, I thought there'd be a charm. I got down here, Harry, uh, Fantastic Beasts, when, um, oh my god, it's Newt, uh, dries Jacob. And it's essentially like a hair dryer sound. It goes, it's like instantly dry and everything. Very cool. Look, I love Jacob and, and Newt so much. They're, they're awesome. Hermione looks, looking out of... For the Defense Against Art, Dark Arts teacher, uh, we, we we hear mention of Professor Sinistra, which I'm pretty sure we have heard a couple of times before, but only in throwaway lines. Um, says that Snape... Uh, oh, yes, uh, Harry is like also like eyeing up the teacher's table and everything and, and spy Snape. It says that Snape is Harry's least favourite person at Hogwarts. I did wrap my brain for a second, but then I thought, yeah, th th that is right. I guess that there is... That there is not only hatred, but also more fear of Snape. Because obviously Snape has power, but also he is an adult and everything. And so it does make sense that, that he would uh, that he dislike Snape more than Draco. Yeah. Um, although technically, um, Voldemort's there. Technically. Yeah. Yeah. At least twice, right? He's technically that. Moving on. Right. Um, the ceiling is like the outside. When does... Uh, so, so like they can see like the rain. Like well, They can see an image of what is similar to outside. It's not actually what's showing outside, is it? Um, in the ceiling, as it always does. Because obviously we've had starry nights there before. Just, I guess it's quite relaxing to be in like a. It's like when it's snowing and you're like in a really warm room, like looking outside. It's just like a really nice feeling and everything. Unless you live in somewhere where you're snowing all the time, and you probably find it quite annoying. But I, I live in the world where snow is still a magical thing. <laughs> you know, not not an inconvenience. Um. Blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, go down here. When is it that someone accidentally makes it rain above them? I feel like it's something to do with Lavender and Ron. No, it's not. It's Ron about to play Quidditch, I feel. There's a scene in the movies where I think it's Ron accidentally makes it rain above himself. And that's a reaction to his emotions? Very interesting, guys. Very interesting. Or maybe I've dreamt that bit. <laughs> Ron, uh, Ron says he could eat an, a hippogriff. Obviously, that's the equivalent of saying I could eat a horse. I got down here again, eating magical creatures again. <laughs> I, I got it because I got I got something like like saying how how it would be so much more expensive to eat magical creatures, you know, because they're rarer and everything. Which I do I, I do see that guys, and also they have other other functions and everything. But in some cultures, they must eat some magical creatures, right? Presumably, there are creature there are animals that uh, that their magic is so subtle. Animal squibs, let's say. God, here we go. Um, where their ma magic is so subtle that it, even a wizard wouldn't immediately know that they are magical. Maybe. Unless they've got like a radar system. Anyway, let's move on for that because we've discussed that a lot. Uh, first years, uh, completely drenched, of course. Dennis arrives, the new main character. Uh, smallest student out of the year. Oh, according to Harry's, you know, skimming the room. Uh, has Hagrid's coat all uh, hanging over him. He spies a card that says, I fell in the lake. He's like really excited about it. Uh, the Sorting Hat song uh, about the founders of Hogwarts. Wonderful, guys. This is actually really awesome. I haven't jotted down all the details because I think it actually says where or whereabouts all each founder is from, in fact. Um, but it was excellent, though. Really, really awesome. Big difference between... Mm -hmm, it's not a problem. But Jim Dale, like, really, like, it's, it's like a shanty. Oh, Gryffindor. It's, it's, it's really good, like, the way that, that, that Jim Dale sings it. Whereas uh, Stephen Fry is straight reading it. From an audio book, very often that's what you want. You just want the text to be read out. Uh, although, I'm listening to the Alan Partridge audio book, the latest one, which is pretty good, guys. I talk about shanty. There's, he sings a shanty during that at one point. Um... Yeah, I'm listening to... What's it called again? And show them the door. 
And as they walked away... Shh! Did it get me copyrighted, Alan? There you go. Uh, Big Beacon, it's called. It's pretty good. I, I love me Alan Partridge, guys. And so any any Alan Partridge, it's great. But like the, the early stuff is, is the best stuff, in my opinion. Well, I Am Alan Partridge is a TV show which ran for two seasons, and that's excellent. It's so it's so done by... Uh, he's, he's one of the greatest comedy characters of all time. And that audiobook, it's Alan, the character, reading it out. Played by Steve Coogan, who you may have heard of. It's his greatest creation by far, guys. In fact, I remember ages ago, he was in, in, in an interview at the end of one of, I, I, on one of the Alan Partridge seasons series that he's done, because there's lots of different series that he's, that he's done. He's like a TV presenter. A failed TV presenter and radio uh, uh, presenter. Um, and in an interview, Steve Coon was like saying, look, I, I've done I've done Alan now. I've, I've done Alan and Partridge now. Uh, that That's behind me. I'm going to move on, create more stuff, create new content, create new characters. And when they all fail, I'll go back to Alan Partridge. Because <laughs> it, it, it is his greatest creation by far, guys. Anyway, I thought I'd just mention that about the audiobooks. But yeah, Jim Dale's is fantastic. I really enjoy it. If I was to choose out of the two, I'd go for Jim Dale. But a lot of people would prefer What's the Fighters, who just straight up reads it. Nothing wrong with that at all, guys. Like I say, a lot of people would actually prefer that. Um, right. But yeah, Jim Dale gives it socks. Um... Describes the houses, Slytherin. He just the, the, the song says that Slytherin are power hungry. That is only a derogatory term, right? Power hungry. I guess you could argue that it's not. A... No, I reckon that's a derogatory term. Does even the sorting act having a blooming go? I guess because he's a blooming. He's blooming Captain Gryffindor's hat, isn't he? We find out here. Uh, the founders picked the uh, uh, picked picked their students. It is the uh, it was Gryffindor uh, the, uh, the founder of Gryffindor's hat that that was turned into the Sorting Hat, where they all put it's, in the song. It says they put the brains into it, something which is horrible. Soon they use magic. Um, not literally, obviously. Um, this was done because they will need to be sorted after the founders die. Presumably, they started using the hat immediately. They would have to have done, uh, rather than wait until they'd all, they'd all you know, corporate it. Because then, you know, whoever, the last one surviving would just say, Oh, mine! <laughs> that would be amazing. Imagine that year. Draw Gryffindor one again. Well, it's no other students, that's why. <laughs> anyway. Um, so... So loved it, loved 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 this song. Both versions were excellent, guys. But I, I give the edge to, to to Jim Dale's performance. Um, uh, Ron, it it it's got to be boring, pretty boring being a hat. <laughs> I really like that sound, guys. That is a that is an excellent sound because Harry like says that's not the same song as uh, as when we were sorted. And he says no, there's a different one each, each year. Again, Harry doesn't know that because this is the second one that he's been to. Um. The hat is not actually sentient, though, is it? It's like a painting, right? Because paintings are made by magic. The sorting hat was made sentient by magic. And so it wouldn't be boring for the hat, because paintings don't get bored, do they? I've never heard. Unless, unless it is a painting of someone being bored, or a painting of someone who was always very bored. Hmm. Yeah, but they're, they're but they're not. But even then, they're still not bored because they don't exist. All goes into what what you know. It's all the whole difference between ghosts and portraits, guys. It's all very interesting to me. So it it, it always fascinates me this stuff. Um. So. First student is Ravenclaw. Harry clocks Cho as the student goes over to the table, and Harry for a second. I, I, I think it says he, he peculiar wanted to to join them or something like that. It's very interesting. It kind of it's it's kind of like a, almost a throwback to the World Cup where Harry is like saying suddenly he would have done anything to get their attention or something like that. It, it, there's clearly a similarity being played on there, which is nice. Um, Fred and George hiss the first Slytherin student as he sits down. 
I don't like that, guys. The age difference is too much there. Even, even if it is one year older, you know, kid in an unfamiliar place may not know anyone else there. Very possibly doesn't know anyone else there. Uh, and you have these two... Nearly adults. No, that's, that's unfair. But these late teens. There we go. Late teens. Blooming hissing at them. Unless they did it with smiles on. But I don't know if they would have done. I don't know. I thought, I thought that was a bit mean. You know. Do it in Draco. Don't do it to like some kid who's literally just been told he's in Slytherin. He may have been desperate to be in Gryffindor. And then suddenly he has these two Gryffindor um, older students. Blooming hissing at him. Anyway. Moving on. Um, Dennis goes to Gryffindor. Fantastic. Uh, I, I don't know where Dennis is going, guys. I presume that at some point Dennis is going to be at least a little bit relevant. <laughs> when we meet characters, it tends to be the case, you know. I was about to ask if we've seen Ginny in this book. Yeah, of course we blooming have. I'm a schmuck. Right. Says to uh, Colin that uh, when he fell into the lake, something pushed him out. And Colin says, oh, it's probably the giant squid. And Dennis is delighted by this. He absolutely should be in Gryffindor, guys. Because I would have been... That would have freaked me out for the rest of the month, at least. Um, makes sense that Dennis is in Gryffindor. If he isn't traumatised by that. Um, we hear that the lake is fathoms deep. Now, I'm not a nautical person, guys. I, I, I live very... Away from the coast in the UK. Oxfordshire is kind of like a long way away from any coast. Like at least two and a half hours. Um, so I, I, I don't actually know what Fathom meant. So I looked it up guys. It's only six feet. I still could have just been six, 12 feet deep. Which, which would mean it's Fathom's deep. But yeah. I, we, well I guess we know that it is obviously a lot deeper. Um, Colin points out Harry to Dennis, and Harry, like, immediately looks away in embarrassment. Well, not even embarrassment, like, awkwardness, I guess is a better term. Um, no Dumbledore speech this year, kind of. It's, yeah, he does the notes afterwards, but there's no... I feel like he... When Harry's here, he did the whole, I've got a few words to say, blah, 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 didn't he? So it was still relatively short, but it's basically a very, very short one here, guys. Uh, any wrestling fans are all thinking exactly the same thing at this point. He says, I only have two words for you all. Lucky you didn't say what DX would say because he would have got fired. <laughs> Quite frankly, if it said that. But either way, very close though. No, it's not close. L look at the spelling. It's not It's not close. Right, anyway. If you, if you, if you know of DX, guys, you, you know what <laughs> the two words thing I'm talking about. Um... We hear from Nick that there was trouble in the kitchen. Apparently, Peeves was uh, kicking off because he, uh, he he wanted to be uh, invited to the feast. Uh, Fry wanted to give him a chance, which is very nice, guys. Very, very Hufflepuff. But the Baron refused it uh, point blank. Uh, Peeves is kicking off the kitchen, scaring all the house elves. Now, guys, I knew that there were house elves in the kitchen because of the uh, trailer to Hogwarts Legacy, which I do want to get back to, guys, when I'm eventually able to live stream again. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very good to, to hear this. And obviously immediately Hermione, I think she like, like knocks her glass over without even re realizing it. Full of pumpkin juice. Sounds horrible. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know what, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's all right. Um, by, by the news about, about the house elves and like she, she's like mortified finding it out. And like she says, what well, we have house elves here. And Nick says, oh, yeah, it's uh, the... Now, how does he... He words this in a very specific way. Um, oh, yes. Uh, Hogwarts has the most elves in Britain for a dwelling, he believes. I had to double check that term because I would have... I thought went straight away thinking, well, what about the ministry? But no, dwelling means a place where people live. And obviously, people do live at Hogwarts. Um... Over 100 seems like a lot, considering how powerful elves, house elves are. I mean, I was, I was going to say, I know there's a lot of students. I don't think that there's still... I mean, 100 house elves is a lot, guys. It really is, I I, I feel. Um, the mark of a good house elf is not being seen. That's actually very cool, guys. It's kind of... Um, 
yeah, I feel like I've heard that sort of thing whilst working in like uh, hospitality and stuff like that. Sort of like you know, there's the, the there's no interruption because you're doing your work in a way where you don't need to be in uh, in front of someone. And you just want everything to be ready for them, so it doesn't even become apparent that there is someone there. I I, I quite like that line. Um. Hermione rallies off, which is great, guys. I, I I think this whole Hermione with the house elf thing, for one, is not in the movies at all. And I think it's blooming fascinating, guys. Is this going to be Hermione's side story in this one? Not completely, obviously, because we have everything that's going to be going on with Ron, which will be kicking off fairly soon. And obviously with Bron. Bron, Ron? That's not right. Rom. There we go. Brom and Rom. Anyway, um, but yes, this whole sticking up for workers' rights thing with Hermione, I, I really appreciate it, I must admit. So she rallies off things like sick leave and holidays and, and pensions and everything. Pensions is amazing. Um, Nick's, Nick completely bursts out laughing at the even the idea and says how uh, house elves don't want those things. That's a generalisation, guys, but you know, I've only met two house elves. And neither of them are having a good time. In fact, these these house elves in Hogwarts, in this one instance, which I presume is not the first time that Peeves is kicked off in the kitchen, absolutely terrified by what's going on. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Um. Uh, so Hermione like pushes the plate away and says that she's not going to eat. Now that obviously does change in the next chapter, guys. But I I I, I appreciate Hermione's philosophy on it it's not just because she's she gave up her own thing i feel like there is a reason to which we will go into um i'm all over the place now the next bit guys i'd imagine to people outside the uk because it is it is in the Amer in the american audiobook guys uh i don't know how common this phrase is when I was a kid and in the 90s okay it was hilarious back then okay that's all I can say is the fact that there was a dessert called spotted dick was hilarious even back when these books were being made now I will question one thing and I agree. I accept. I, I can. I concede. I should say, Ron is of the Wizarding World. Maybe they're eating. Maybe it's the coolest dessert in town in the Wizarding World. Spotted Dick, guys, in the nineties was incredibly dated. Then it really was, guys. It was just a joke. But but by that by that point, in fact, and so the fact that Spotted Dick gets mentioned. Made me very happy, guys. But the fact that Ron is like, oh, spotted dick. Have a Mars bar, Ron. It's not exactly the most, it's not like a 90s, you know, gourmet cuisine, you know. It's like, it's a very, very dated, I say very, very dated. I think it's like 50s, 60s, 70s. That's when spotted dick was le legit and wasn't something that everyone always laughed at. Although Sid James probably did in Carry On. Spotted dick. <laughs> so I, I, I've been trying to do a Sid James laugh recently. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. <laughs> so there's a com there's a comedian called there was a comedian called Sid James guys who was in several movies which I'm, I'm sure I've definitely mentioned before. Carry on movies. Jim Dale was in several of them. And yeah, uh, there was a one of the main main actors in them was a, a guy a comedian called Sid James, and he would always be the <laughs> sleazy character. Let's put it like that. <laughs> uh, when it came to women and everything, and he would say a lot of double entendres and stuff like that, and Ardra, he'd, he'd always have that laugh. Where he goes, "Ha ha ha, spotted dick." Ha ha ha. I I don't know why I've been working on Sid James laugh recently. That's what I'm doing with my time, guys. Seriously. Um. Anyway. So yes, we hear about spotted dick, which is which is amazing. When when you got to that book, that part of the book, guys, were you confused? <laughs> 
Or had you heard? Maybe I'm I, maybe I'm misconstruing. It seems like a very British dish to me. So maybe, but maybe it isn't. And maybe you've all heard of spotted dick. And maybe none of you find the fact that it's called spotted dick funny at all. In which case, I apologise. Um, but yeah, Ron is like gording um, like food over Hermione, who is now refusing to eat. Which is very mean from a friend way, in in a friendly way. Um, Hermione gives him a look that's similar to McGonagall, so Ron stops. It's amazing. I love that little detail. Um, well, I would love Hermione to ask Dumbledore or even McGonagall about the house elf situation. Because she cannot be the first person, guys. She cannot. And also, Harry, Harry hasn't even raised his... Harry hasn't even given an opinion on it. Man, I don't even have an opinion. Sorry. Um... I'm pretty certain that Harry has not aired an opinion either way towards his situation since finding out of the house elf situation from um, Winky. Yeah, it's just been Hermione. So I'd like, I'd really like it. There's just a scene where she go to Dumbledore. Why not? And say Dumbledore. By the way, all this house elf thing. You know, it seems like no. It, she she says it several times in this book, guys. In these chapters, guys. Slave labor. And for Dumbledore to explain to her. Because Nick's te not the person to explain to. Uh, Barty's not the person to explain to her. Ron's not the person to explain it to. Even Arthur isn't the, the, the person to explain it to her. Um, and so I'd really like a scene where someone like Dumbledore or McGonagall explain it to her. I would read it all... No, not not serious. I I don't know, not, not serious. Yeah, because it's a cultural difference, guys. And I'm with Hermione still. I really am, guys. I know that, I know that there are different opinions. I know, you know Nick's laughing his head off and everything. But you know, this is, I'm not saying this is the case, guys. But it's possible that the elves have been conditioned to want to be in servitude their entire life. You know. How did it start? At what point did... Was the first house elf completely happy with it? Was the first house elf treated better than house elves are treated now? Maybe we'll get into it, but guys. I feel like we are. Because we've heard so much about house elves the last couple of chapters. There has to be more to it than that. So we shall see. We shall see. Uh... Bah, bah, bah. Just because it, it's uh, been done for centuries doesn't make it right. Again, guys, I, I, I'm not passing judgment. It's just how my opinion on the situation right now. And right now, I'm completely with Hermione. Uh, so uh, Dumbledore then stands up and does like the notices and everything like that. That says that Filch is uh, banning uh, screaming yo-yos, fanged frisbees, and ever bashing boomerangs. I love it when we get three things back to back like that, guys. It is a common thing in these books. Which brings the total to 437 items that are now banned. I feel like that's kind of fair, to be honest. <laughs> I feel like it is, guys, because you know what? How many dangerous, you know, not not dangerous, but you know how. I mean, how many chaotic toys and so on, and you know, sweets and everything there are in this world. Oh yeah, no, I don't know why I went into this, guys. Oh, no, of course I did. Filch has banned 437 items, guys. And I instantly thought, when I hearing that part, how influential and powerful Filch is. Is Filch the most powerful squib in the UK? Because I would imagine that a squib could do some work at the Ministry. They'd have to commute, though. They wouldn't be able to use flu, flu powder, would they? And I, I, I'm pretty certain they would not be able to. And a lot of the work at the Ministry... A lot, most of the work, they wouldn't be able to do. But is there a job at the Ministry that a squib could do as efficiently as anyone else? Then again, Filch. Well, that's the thing. Cause, you know, a, a, a wizard would be able to be a more efficient, uh, more efficient than Filch. I know Filch is very fast at getting around, isn't he? Because of the secret tunnels and so on. But it does make me think that Filch is pos possibly the squib with the most power in the UK. I feel like that probably is the case. Only if the, a wizard could work at the ministry under, not not as a janitor. Because this is the thing, guys. Um, if, if at the ministry you had a janitor, and then at Hogwarts you had a janitor, Filch at 
absolutely is more important than uh, than the one at the Ministry. Because the Ministry ain't having to do with BS. Let's put it like that. And so, Filch being able to bring in these rules, apart from the manure that's exploding on Percy's desk, of course. Um, I don't know, that just clashed two things together then, didn't I? <laughs> the, the manure and the exploding letters. Um, screw this. I feel like Filch is possibly, pro probably the most decorated is probably the wrong term, but the higher, the, 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 the squib with the most power, I feel like is definitely the case. Interesting. Let, let me know what you think. Or maybe there are other examples. No Quidditch this year. Harry, Fred and George can't believe it. Dumbledore uh, about to announce the cup when Mad-Eye Moody enters. Um... Apparently it looks unhuman, like like chiseled by someone who barely knows what a human's meant to look like. It's interesting because presumably that's what Moody looks like. But it is also, it's a nice subtle thing of this person's appearance isn't real. And we know what that could mean, guys. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Knowing, it for, knowing uh, what happens in the movie, it's very interesting how telling it how unhuman this man looks. Um, his eye, which isn't an eye patch, interestingly enough, because obviously in the movie it is, it says that it's electric blue. Now, I thought that meant the entire eye. I've looked up pictures from the movie and, and the iris is blue. So maybe that's what it meant, electric blue. But from the description in the book, I thought the entire eye was blue. But, you know, obviously with, with like a, um, pupil as well. Um... This false size of bell, blah, 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 patch. Uh, it's a really great description. I, I, it's a really, you really get the, a, a real good idea of what this guy looks like. Like I think that it says it looks like he's made of wood and stuff. It's, it's a beautiful description of, 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 beautiful, you know what I mean? But it's a very well-written description of Moody. Only Hagrid and Dumbledore are applauding uh, as he walks in. Uh, after Dumbledore introduces him to the room. Everyone else is in, basically, essentially in shock of like how strange this person looks. And presumably the, the professors aren't applauding because they're probably thinking, well, it's much like, um, what's his blooming name? Lockhart. They're all thinking, this guy and a professor. <laughs> oh, it's interesting none of the professors were were fascinated with him, wasn't it? Maybe Dumbledore told him that, he's, that, he's, that his stuff's all lies. I don't know. I don't know. Either way. Um, so yeah, everyone else is just completely in shock by, by this person's appearance. Says that he has a wooden leg with a clawed foot. I don't think he has a wooden leg in the movies, guys. I don't think he does. Certainly not in the pictures I saw. Um, I could be wrong, though, because the, the pictures that I looked up may have been, like, publicity ones, which were meant to only be from there or something. But yeah, don't think he had a wooden leg. He, he, he may have a wooden leg, but it's not obvious. Although Harry does notice it through his, uh, as as he's moving his gown and everything, you know. Uh, but yeah, the, the the clawed foot sounds pretty awesome. I must admit. Oh yeah, there's a bit in the movie where when when Moody walks in and like the the weather starts going mad and he like goes and gets his wand out and stops, does something. I I've, I've watched that scene a few times, guys. I have no idea what's going on there, and it's not in the movie. Yeah, I've literally no idea what that little moment was all about, guys. Like, what was meant to happen? Did he stop something from happening? Yeah. But yeah, you, you know that moment? It's just like a little moment where like everyone goes, Oh, the world was going crazy! And bad, you know, goes like that and like uh, something shoots something and then it all comes down again. No idea what's going on in that scene, guys. I presume there is uh, a meaning to it, though. Uh, try winning... Uh, oh, that's... Try Wizards Tournament uh, hasn't taken place for a hundred years. This is information, guys, that we... This scene in the movie. My God. My God. Is it, is it like taking like 15 other scenes and just shoving it all into one? Because if we see the cup at this, we, we hear about a uh, an unbiased judge or something. Impartial judge. Um, 
And even even Barty's there. So, like, how many scenes in the movie... Sorry. How many scenes from the book did the movie make into one? Because I'm going to say it's at least 15. It's insane, guys. It's so many. Uh, and so, yeah, we hear this fascinating information, guys, which I'm pretty certain is not in the movie. The fact that it hasn't taken place for 100 years. It's, it's, uh, it's, it actually only started 700 years ago. Um... When Dumbledore an announces it, Fred like goes, "You're joking!" Like out loud, like really loud. Apparently, like like, like, like removes like the um, the tension from Moody entering the room. Um, whereas in the movie, people are like, "Ah, oh, really? That's great." It's not like what because like, this is a big moment, guys. This is huge. Um, it's very possible that the last tournament. Hadn't happened before their grandparents had, were born. And so, yeah, you definitely get the impression that it's a bigger deal in the book than in the movie. Because two seconds after the announcement, we're on to the rules. We got the blooming um, Bo Barton and uh, Drumstrag students coming in. It's insane how much stuff. We got, like, you know, uh, Miss Jones from... <laughs> Still calling Miss Jones, I apologise. Yeah, we got so much happening in this one scene. It's crazy how much they, they cram into it. Either way. So when Fred says, you're joking, uh, Dumbledore says, I'm not joking, although I did hear a joke about a troll, a hag, and a le leprechaun going into a bar, and Maggie, like, you know, I think she does it like, <clears throat> like that, and, um, and like, uh, Dumbledore realises that it's probably inappropriate. Or he could have saved it. He could have said uh, a troll hag walk into... Uh, a troll, a hag, and a, a leprechaun walk into a bar. The landlord says, what's this, some kind of joke? That easy, guys. I should actually point this out, guys. This is interesting. The whole free person going into a bar thing. Is that a British joke tradition? I think it probably is. So back in the day, guys, when I was a kid, like, one of the most common types of jokes there were, were, um, an Englishman, Irishman, Irishman and a Scotsman, Scotsman go, uh, Scotsman, sorry, not Scotch, Englishman, Irishman, and Scotsman, English, Englishman, Irishman, and Scotsman go into a bar, and then there's, there's loads of different punchlines for it, you know, and then, like I say, the, the, the easiest and the most safest is an Englishman, Irishman and Scotsman go into a bar and landlord says, what's this, some kind of joke? He could, he could have got out of it. He could have gotten out of it. <clears throat> I, I'm keeping looking down just to make sure I'm recording, guys. Would it, be, would it be terrible if I hadn't been recording this entire time? Um... The Triwizard Tournament started 700 years ago. It's actually, it's, it's actually a friendly contest between three of the largest schools in Europe. This blew my mind, guys, because I thought it was a different. I thought it was different schools every time. This is something which was has always been ran, presumably between Bo Barton, Drumstrag, and Griff and uh, Hogwarts. Right? I'm pretty sure that's what the book suggests. I didn't think that was the case at all, guys. I thought it was three random schools. I've always thought that since since watching the movie. Um, it used to be every five years until the death toll rose too high. Um, International Department of Magical Cooperation we hear, hear about here, which I'm pretty sure, sure, certain we've heard about before. I'm surprised that Drumstrag would want to be a part of that because we do hear that they're quite secretive. Although that could be like a, 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 a negative portrayal of what they're like, but... You get the feeling that they probably are quite like that. And so the cooperation bit is interesting. I guess you can still cooperate and, and be uh, secretive. I wonder what happened to uh, Brom. Uh, maybe we'll find out. Maybe we'll find out. Because he could turn out to be a dark wizard, of course. Because they, they, they make him there. Um... Oh, like, because they teach black, uh, dark magic, don't they? Yeah. Thousand ga galleons to the winner. I looked it up, guys. The equivalent would have been... It's very specific. £4,930. I presume at the time. Uh, very specific. Very, very specific. 
Dumbledore says that he will be personally be uh, ensuring that un the un underage students will not try to hoodwink, good term, their way in. Fred and George are like, um, he instantly actually looks at Fred and George, who are both like not happy at all about it. Uh, I've got to say, Dumbledore and, and them two probably have history. They probably do, guys. And, you know, I would like to hear more about it. Because he must have had a lot of run into them before. He must have done. Um, it's actually Barty Crouch who announces the age thing in, in the movies. And Fred and George like saying, you don't know what you're doing. That's not like, quite a horrible thing to say. But, you know, that's, that's the sort of thing that some teachers, uh, teenagers would say. And then Dumbledore like, instantly like roars and gets everyone to be quiet and everything. Quite a good moment for Dumbledore, but it's not needed in in this case. Um, the, the, the you know the crowd is annoyed by it. he, but I think he just raises his voice a little bit. Odd that it's age rather than school year. I do feel like it is. I guess it's maybe a, a more of a legal thing, but it, like it, it's for you to submit your name. You have to be of age, and so if your birthday is like a month after, because it's starting in October, guys. So we have at least a month. I think, until it starts. If your birthday is in between, you're still not able to enter because it's you know it's when you give your give, it's give the the the, uh, the your name forward is when you had to actually be old enough. I should re you know what I should really be remo removing these messages as I go by. Haven't I? That's a note for self. Um, non. Oh yes, they have not mentioned the Goblet of Fire yet. Uh, yet, uh, yet. They keep on saying an impartial judge, which is so cool. I really like that. So they, they, everyone thinks it's actually actually a person. But we'll decide who, who will be going. Um, the other schools will be arriving in October. Does feel a little rushed in the movie. I feel like that's an understatement. Veggie from the past, it's insanely rushed in the, in the movie. Every happens at once. And the thing is, it doesn't just happen. It's not like, da da, they're here, da da da. It's all done really well in the movie. But because of that, it's so much stuff happening in that scene. Like, so much stuff. Anyway. It is the same scene, isn't it? I think it is. If, if I'm incorrect, guys, I apologise. I, I did watch. I watched back the, episode, the scenes which are actually happening. And obviously, I think that's half of this scene. At this point. Um. Oh yeah, we hear that the that, that only the potential contestants will be arriving from the other schools. So what's Fleur's sister doing there then? Fleur, Fleur's sister doing there then? She's younger, isn't she? Um, who I'm presumably too young to be a part of it, I guess. Well, anyway, we shall see. Or she may she may be a movie exclusive to be fair. Um, that will be arriving at the schools. Uh, I've literally only just worked out. The irony of what happens with Fred and George. Yes, I, the whole thing with Fred and George becoming really old and everything, guys. I, I think I've always misunderstood that. But we will wait until we get to, to, to that scene to actually discuss it further. Um, Harry has yet to... Uh, ha Harry hasn't yet dreamt of being chosen. Yes, I, whilst listening to us, like, saying, Harry's not... Because very often, guys, in fact, even in this book, we get, like, little moments where Harry's like, oh, imagine if I won the Quidditch World Cup and everything. We haven't got that yet. But then again, this is brand new information to Harry and so he actually hasn't thought about you know being King Big Socks yet um I guess because he hasn't been brand new to him uh, Neville mentions well, on the way back to the, 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 the on the way to the um uh, the, the uh, sleeping areas common rooms Neville mentions how his grandmother always says that he should be upholding his family name more which you know that's, that's what his family's like guys um oh yeah who's the new head boy we, we, we don't hear uh, about that. Maybe we, we will do down the line. Dean has uh, a West Ham poster next to his bed. That makes me really happy. And it's just like a static poster as well. I don't know why, guys. That really makes me... It almost like it feels like pride that he has of like saying, yeah, I'm still a part of this world. I'm part of the wizarding world as well, though. I really like that. I thought that was cool. And Ron look, looks at it and he goes, mental. Because <laughs> it's not moving. Everything's ridiculous. Um... And like Harry uh, and Ron's like saying, yeah, maybe I should put my name in if, Harry, if Fred and George can work it out and everything. And Harry like, doesn't. Harry doesn't really like confirm if he were anything. But when when his head hits his pillow, he does think about you know him 
winning it and Cho falling in love with him and everything, him having all the glory. And it says that, he, that Harry is glad that Ron couldn't see what he was thinking. And so maybe he is purposely not saying, oh yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Either way, great, either way, great chapter. Thoroughly enjoyed this one, guys. Lots of notes for it, actually. Weirdly enough, I mean, we're coming up to an hour, which is not particularly long for these, uh, for, for 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 these um notes. But we we got a lot through it. I'm so sorry about the talk about Michael Robbins for some reason during this, but you know what I'm like at this point, guys. Um, I had to make sure I'm not closing down the wrong thing. I'm not. Boom. Now let's move over to chapter thirteen. Mad-Eye Moody. Weasel's joined us. Sorry, Weasel, didn't mean to make you jump there. He was scratching, and so... Scratching at the door, I should say. So as I let her in, obviously. So we'll see how long she can sit there. She'll probably want to go out in a second, but... Hello, Doody. Hello, Doodly Doodle. What a good doodle. Hoodle. Sorry. I don't know why I, I, I say things that, that rhyme with Weasel a lot when I'm talking to Weasel. All right, let's get on with this. So, um, chapter 13, Mad-Eye Moody. Harry Star- Oh, I ain't done the side panels, Boozle. Why didn't you remind me? There we go, one hole. Hole noodle. Right, um... Harry starts the day with disappointment as he still hasn't heard from Sirius. He heads to his day's classes, which include herbology, care for magical creatures, where they're introduced to the bl blast ended scroots. It's scroots, isn't it? Yes. And divination. At, uh, at dinner, Malfoy brings up a newspaper article that has Ron's dad being wrongfully called out and by the wrong name. And the first Weasley to have that this time, isn't he? Um, in this book. Uh, words are exchanged. And when Harry turns around, Malfoy hits him with a spell. Again, again, Mad-Eye appears and turns Malfoy into a ferret. And McGonagall could, not be, McGonagall could not be more displeased. We end with Hermione talking, which ruins the greatest day of Ron's life, which is an amazing way of putting it. Thank you so much for the summaries, Max, and as always, Jonas, thank you so much for the side panels. I have no idea why I nearly called you Trend Mirror Ron. Seriously, I've been I have been watching these still here. League of Legends cinematic cinematic a lot, guys. It is so good. And the great thing with League of Legends fan base is that they'll give the information about it, and I've learned so much about the characters that are in it, it's unbelievable. And, and the main character in it is called Trinamir. So, Fred George and Lee Jordan, who's always referred to as Lee Jordan. But then again, Dean Thomas is as well. Seamus isn't referred to as Seamus Finnegan every time. At the start of the book, sure. At the start of the book, it makes sense that, that, that you reintroduce their full name. But I swear that Lee Jordan is always called Lee Jordan. <laughs> anyway, uh, discussing uh, ways to age oneself. Uh... So yeah, I, I've got my little note here. So I said we'd discuss at the time. Was it the cup or was it... What... Was it the cup or Dumbledore that, that made the mage rapidly? Or was it the thing that they took that screwed up? I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure. We'll get, to, we'll get to it when we get there. A herbology with the puffs. Magical creatures with the slivs. And then double divination is our timetable for the day. Pretty disgusting day, quite frankly. <laughs> Professor Trawley, uh Oh yeah, like yeah, Harry is is, is uh, dreading divination. It says how Professor Trawley kept uh, keeps predicting his death, which he found very annoying. I really like that term. That's a very nice, good way of putting it. Hermione eating uh, is eating again. Uh, she says it, it's a. It, that there's a better way of protesting for the elves. I I think that she's right there. This this isn't Hermione caving into her tummy grumbling or anything like that. I feel like it's right. You, you, you can't... Rome, Rome wasn't built in a day, you know? And so, I, I, yeah. Ron's obviously mocking her for it and the fact that she's back eating, but she's not like... Well, it's, it's, it's not feasible for her to protest in this way. She, she, she does, she's not saying that she doesn't want the... I'm, I'm not going to turn this into a 15-minute rant, I promise. Hermione is not ar arguing that the elves should not be working in the kitchens. They're not, she's not arguing that they shouldn't be making food. 
what what she's arguing is that they should be treated like employees. Which I think is fair. So I think like her eating is fine. I don't think it's a caving in of um, morality at all, in my opinion. Um, anyway. Um, owls enter with the with the morning mail. Um, there is no Harry like looks up to see if Hedwig is there, but it's interesting the way it says it. It says, "But there's but there's no white amongst the grey and brown." Is that, is snowy owls particularly rare to be used as um as as delivery um uh, birds. Maybe they are. The fact that there's that Harry all only has to look up and just try, try to spot white seems a bit odd. Maybe they're more expensive. Maybe. I don't know. Just seems odd. Just seems odd. Um, obviously Hagrid bought Hedwig for him, but you know Harry meant a lot to Hag uh, Hagrid, so he may have put a pretty penny into it. Um, just brown and weird. I've got down here. Is that weird? Is it? Is it weird that there's no other white owls? I don't think so. <laughs> Draco's uh, owl is an e eagle owl, which I've never even heard of before. I'd like to look it up. They are beautiful animals, though. Lands on his shoulder. I've got to say, it's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, right, here we go, guys. Does Harry's breakfast change every single year or scene that he's eating breakfast? Because I swear it does, guys. He's eating porridge this time. We have definitely seen him eating cereal before. Because I remember Ron was eating a fried breakfast and Harry was eating cereal. And I, I remember thinking, maybe that was just in the movie. But I feel like that was in the book as well. I remember thinking, Harry, how are you not? <laughs> so, as a vegan here, guys. As a vegan. Why are you not having your sausages, your eggs, your bacon? Hash browns, maybe. Baked beans. Mushrooms. Absolutely, you have to have the mushrooms. Slice of toast I'd go for rather than um, rather than uh, any special bread like Irish bread or like that. But obviously that'd be an Irish breakfast then. I always go for a large glass of orange juice. When I'm having the vegan version, I should say. Whenever I have a fry up, I have a, a, a pint of uh, orange juice. Um, yeah. I think I covered all the main ba bases there. Brown. No, sorry. Ketchup and orange. Or brown... No. Okay. Ketchup, definitely. And brown sauce, if it's available. And I feel like that's it. I feel like that is the, the, the absolute mainstays. I mean, some people put crazy things in their bre English breakfast, guys. Avocado, some people have. Um, but, yeah. As a vegan, I shouldn't be really talking about it. <laughs> but, yes. I, I do... I, 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 I think it's in the movie scene where, like, Ron's having, like, a fried breakfast and, and Harry's eating his cereal. I'm thinking, how are you not having that <laughs> as well, you know? But anyway, does Harry's breakfast always change? Because I swear that it's been different each time. Which, you you got the variety. Why not? Anyway. Um, herbology is focused on... Bobo... -ter Bo boba tubers. So I'm a YouTuber. People who work on Bubo are boba tubers. Uh, slug like plants which produce pus. The way that Jim Dale keeps saying pus in the audiobook is disgusting. Is pus. He's like, he's like, he's really horrible the way. It's a really weird voice for, for, um. Right. A really weird voice for, um. Sprout. That, that is giving. Very different voice, I should say. Um, but yeah, Stephen Fry is just saying pus, which is, you know, in this scene, I definitely prefer because it's disgusting the way that Jim Dale keeps on saying it. Um, now, this is the weird thing, guys. So because I had to look up Eagle Owl, I, I, I looked up the Wikipedia and it says that they are part of the Bubo rank of, of, uh, of, of Owl. What's going on? Have I worked out the main twist in the book version of A Goblet of Fire? Because we were just talking about eagle owls, which are a boobo, uh, boobo owl, and now we're talking about booba tubers. Boobo spelt exactly the same. What is going on? <laughs> anyway. I've actually got in capital letters, what is happening? Question mark, question mark, exclamation mark. The puff. We'll be, uh, we'll be going to Madame Pomfrey. Uh, Hannah... Uh, Madame Pomfrey, um, 
for uh, it's like a, it's a I don't, I don't know about the cure, but it's an ointment for against like spots and pimples and everything. Um, and Hannah Hannah of Hufflepuff, of course, says how Eleni's midgen tried to, to, to use a, a a curse on her pimple, tried to curse her pimples off. Oh god! I mean, people have done so, similar sh dangerous things. I'm gonna say stupid, then, but yeah, that's horrible. Oh, I don't. I don't. I know her nose fell off. That, that that's the only bit of information that we got, and and it was able to be put back on. Do wizard folk get spots? I would have thought no, unless it was a, unless it was like a curse or something like that. Like you know, as in like, um, or reaction to to a, to a uh, potion going wrong or something, or right, I guess. Um. I would have thought that wizards and witches wouldn't get uh, spots. I think it's great that they do because it's more relatable for kids reading these books. But I would have thought that um, that much like the hair and the teeth, it's just something that sorts itself out. That's what I would have thought. Fangs back. Uh, the uh, care for magic creatures lesson is based uh, is all about blast ended scruits, scruits, isn't it? Yes. Um, the idea that Hagrid has is for them all to raise them. They are they, they sound like weird, strange things, guys, which don't have mouths apparently. Um, Draco asks what the point and what they do, and Hagrid like pauses for a second and says, "That's next lesson now, Malfoy." <laughs> Just, he blatantly either doesn't know. No, I think that's it. I mean, he, he, okay, either he's he's ignorant to it or no one knows. <laughs> Maybe that's it. It hasn't actually been researched yet. Um, oh, you notice about the blasting part, though. So, yeah, he, he blatantly doesn't know. Um, interesting. I've got down here that it's interesting that Hagrid calls Draco Malfoy. Because he doesn't with any other... I'm pretty sure with no other student he does. I don't think he's ever talked with Crabbe and Goyle, but um, who are always referred to as Crabbe and Goyle. But Draco is referred to as Draco by some people. Not really, though. He is really referred to as Malfoy by most people. But it's weird. It's interesting that Hagrid re referred to him as Malfoy. Maybe it is because Hagrid and the Malfoys have this tension between them, you know, historically. But yeah, it's interesting that. I mean, the thing is, guys, I feel like I'm the only person who consistently calls Draco Draco. Um, then again, a lot, I mean, most of you guys refer to Arthur as Mr. Weasley. And so, yeah, I guess we all have different ways of putting it. But it's just interesting that he refers to him as Malfoy. I, I feel like it is, anyway. And it might be down to the history that they have between the families. Family and person. Uh, no families. That makes sense. Um, are there other students or... Is it just a family history thing? Uh, Magical Creatures is disgusting. <laughs> it really is. It's a horrible day of school this time, guys. I think you shame his remarks upon that. How they're feeding frogs, livers, ants, eggs, and, and grass snakes, or attempting to feed them to them because they don't, no one knows what they eat. That's the problem. I should have explained that. Uh, it's definitely not for me. I, I, this is the thing, is because I've always said that Care for Magical Creatures would have been one of the classes which I would have been up for the most but yeah there's a lot of feeding that has to be done with disgusting things disgusting creatures and where to find them or where not to find them um they appear to explode i think it's dean who like gets a burn mark by part of one exploding i think or blast blasting off as as hagrid refers to it draco complains and hermione says how um Says how uh, dragons are useful, but you want, wouldn't want them as a pet. It's like say, say, saying how they how they appear to be useless and not very attractive. And Hermione says, "Well, you know, just because they're not pretty doesn't mean they're not useful. Uh, you wouldn't want a dragon as a pet because you know they're useful, but you wouldn't want them as a pet." And instantly you think Norbert. Oh, well, I didn't. Cause I always forget the name Norbert, but uh, luckily it does say it here. Uh, but yeah, Hagrid, even Hagrid. Looks over to Harry and Ron, and they all have like a like you know, uh, what is it, what is it, a commu communal smile. There we go. Uh, I can never remember remember Nor Norbert's name. Um, have I told Draco? Oh yes. So so afterwards, when when, when they're walking up to the castle again, um, 
they're talking about the the blast enders scruits scruits sorry and how how redundant it all seems and her mind like says well no i i, I she thinks that if Hagrid does work out how to feed them, they could end up being six foot tall, six foot long each of them, which would be very, very dangerous, obviously. Um, and that's when Ron says, um, oh, where am I? I'm completely lost again. I don't know why I'm not removing them as I go. And then Ron like says, oh, it, it, is that why? Oh, no, he says something like, but what about... The, the cure for seasickness or something like that. And Hermione says, I only told Draco that um, uh, because of how, how he's acting and everything. It's very nice, guys, that we're hearing after the fact about a line of dialogue. So that bit did confuse me a little bit because obviously we didn't hear that. You know, Hermione saying well, that they, they cure seasickness, presumably actually, actually lying rather than hypothetically putting it out there. And so yeah, Draco now thinks that that's what it is. Again, I'm surprised it was to get seasickness. Motion sickness would have been better for him to say because they could have had that for flu powder and stuff, wouldn't they? Hmm. Hermione does admit, though, that she agrees with Draco and says that they that that, that, that the skirts should be stamped out before they start attacking. Which is quite hardcore of Hermione, I must admit. I do have a little note underneath here saying that would make a very different book if that's what this was all going to be about. Um, but yes. Okay. Uh, Hermione's eating as fast as possible. She wants to go to the to the library. She's like got, got, got like a full mouth of sprouts when she's explaining to, to, to Ron what's going on. Because Ron like says, "What well, you trying to make yourself sick? Is that the new protest?" But no, uh, uh, yes, that is here. And uh, but uh, Hermione like says, "No, no, I, I I need to go to the li to library." I got down here that that Hermione likes sprouts. I appreciate that. Uh, do you like sprouts, guys? I actually, I actually did a Twitter poll, and I think that largely people liked sprout. I could look it up right now if I can get down to it fast enough. I didn't do it over Christmas. I did it after Christmas, which is a bit late. But, um, but yes, I, I'm sure the majority of people liked sprouts. Here we go. It is 50... Oh, it's closer than I thought. It is 58.2% said yes. Uh, thirty-six point four percent said no, and five point five percent said shut up, veggie. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, guys, I always have that as an option in all of my polls. I always have done, so don't worry, no one's being nasty to me. I've always had that there. So yes, Hermione likes sprouts. I approve. And the weird thing is, guys, I like sprouts, but they are disgusting. You know what I mean? Do you like sprouts? You would concede they are disgusting, right? There is something. It's, it's, it's a flavour that you shouldn't enjoy. It shouldn't be enjoyable, but it just is. That's my opinion of sprouts. It's quite strange. What do you think, Moodle? Oh. Yeah, right, Moodle. Uh, right. I'm may she's still here, to be honest. Um. A divination, Trawley, um says to Harry, the thing you, that you think is going to happen will, will come to pass, and perhaps sooner than you think. I mean, again, the, the, I mean, you could say that, that to anyone, and they'd probably think of something which uh, uh, they'd probably think of something which they can latch that onto. Again, this is Hermione's whole philosophy, but we—I I feel like there is a line here that proves that she's not a charlatan. We'll get to it. There is. Well, kind, kind of, it kind of does. Okay. Um, so as tip as typical for a Trawley lesson, Harry is completely phasing out uh, until he just uh, th thinking about like the pr her previous predictions until she he suddenly looks over and realizes that everyone in the room is looking at him, <laughs> and it turns out that uh, Trawley was had been saying to him that he they he his his bought he was born under the influence of Saturn. I got down here that the Sega Saturn would have been out at this point, I'm pretty certain, especially if the PlayStation's out with Mega Mutilation Part 3. Part 3. Part 3. It's such a, that is such the sort of thing, I, I know we've gone into it before guys, but it's, saying a game is Part 3 is such a term by someone who doesn't play video games, guys. Nowadays it's different with story-based games and everything, but back in the day, guys, no game was called Part 3 that I can think of anyway. Um... 
so yes, that, that that's her that's her uh, thoughts on Harry's what sign she, she he, he's under. Uh, Trawley uh, attempts to predict that Harry was born midwinter and is wrong. I got down here. It, I got down here. That is a risky guess for a charlatan. So that's why I do feel like she does believe what she's saying. And I feel like we discussed this before as well, guys. But if if you were a charlatan, it would not be difficult to find out Harry's birth nay, b birth month via the you know school files and everything like that. That's what charlatans do, you know. Um, like you know, like you know, mediums who like you know, uh, you know, tell you like you know. I, I think it's terrible what they do personally, but whether like like I said, I, I'm getting a name, thinking Bobby and everything, and like you know, like talk to like people's, uh, you know, people that they've that they've lost and everything. They, they really look into people's histories. They do it in a very, a lot of them do, guys. I don't know if 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 any of you believe in in mediums and everything. A lot of them do use underhanded tactics. I'm not saying that they all do, but a lot of them do. Um, I know that because because it's been proven. And, you know, people have been exposed for doing it and so on. But either way. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not taking away from your experience with it, though, is what I'm saying. Um, Ron does a trolley impression here. <laughs> I, I can't do it, but... There, there are two Neptunes, uh, which is a sign a midget with glasses is being born. God knows what that means. God knows what that means, but that's what Ron says, I think. Oh my god. So Ron says a lot of things in this scene, guys. He says something which is inappropriate, I feel like it's fair to say. Um, it is the most default joke of all time, guys. You know what I was saying earlier on? Englishman, Irishman, Scotchman. Scotsman go into a pub and the barman says, what's this, some kind of joke? This joke that Ron makes is even more stock than that. I don't even know if I could say it, guys, but um, Lavender successfully gets the, the sigil of, of, uh, of, oh no, at least an image, maybe, of Uranus, which is a planet, I think. It's not one of these ones which has been declassified, is it? And I think it is. Um, and Trelawney goes over to, like, discuss what that means and everything. And Ron, this is a different... There was something else in these chapters that Ron said, which was kind of out there as well. I can't think what it was. I feel like we've already gone past it, though. But this is showing a different side of Ron. I'm not, I'm not having to go at him. I'm not, I'm not saying how dare he make the most basic joke in the galaxy. It is a bit inappropriate. Um, and also, Trolley must have heard it a billion times. Do you want to say it instead of me, Weasel? Okay, I'll say it. Ron remarks. Can I have a look at Uranus 2? And I'll take you back to the previous chapter, guys. He didn't laugh when he said spotted dick. So this guy's humour levels are all over the place, guys, because... Finding the term spotted dick funny and find, <laughs> finding the term Uranus funny are absolutely package deal same level joke. And so he makes that joke and surely is blood and fear. <laughs> which is quite a funny reaction, I must admit. Uh, they get given a whole bunch load of homework. And I think the whole class is, to be honest, I think, rather than just Ron and Harry. It should just be Ron, to be fair. Um... And, and when she's, like, explaining how she, where, you know, that she wants it by this time and she wants it in full and everything, uh, Trorley is apparently is starting to talk like McGonagall, which is quite an amazing, amazing thing. Imagine McGonagall talking like Trorley. <laughs> but, yeah, that's quite amazing. Everyone's turning into McGonagall, guys. Maybe that's the difference, because everyone's been saying that the difference between the movie and Goblet of Fire and the book is, are huge. Maybe the real twist is that everyone's becoming McGonagall. Because Hermione was becoming McGonagall in the last chapter. Trelawney's becoming McGonagall this chapter. 
Maybe Mad Eye Moody in the next chapter is going to turn into McGonagall. Neville's going to turn into McGonagall. Fang. They're all going to turn into McGonagall, guys. Until everyone is McGonagall. This is what happens when I talk for too long, guys. Seriously. I need stopping. I need stopping. Hermione hasn't got any homework from Arthramacy. Is that right? Um, yes, yeah, so, so she says how like she hasn't got any uh, homework from Professor Vector. And Ron, Ron like, says, well, buddy for <laughs> Professor Vector. i got to say, I really like that term. I really like it when people sarcastically use the term buddy for. Well, buddy for you. They use the usual term. I really like that. I don't know why. Very easily entertained. I really like this term. Yes, I've got, I literally wrote down. I really like that term. Uh, Draco with Crab and Goyle approach, approach with a paper saying that Arthur is back in the news. Uh, it's a Skeeter article. We hear that Arnold Weasley. I don't know if he, he's, he's, if he's related to... Um, Whatever Percy was called in the last chapters. I can't remember. W w w Weatherby. No, we're Weatherby. Arnold Weatherby, you should have said. Very very lax by Skeeter, by the way. I would have thought she'd be all over the, those details. Because to expose people, you had to get the actual names right. So very lackluster there. Unless Arthur gave a false name, which I doubt. He was involved in a tussle with police. Now, I'm a little bit confused, guys. I am a, I am a bit confused by this. It's not a fight here. When we know that Arthur, you know, f does throw down when when the chips are down, but um, I'm pretty sure that he's not actually throwing hands here at the police. Um, had to modify several policemen's uh, memories. Um, it was all to do with um, about Mad Eye's bins and everything, and, and the police arriving. I thought that. Um, Oh my goodness, the names, the names, the names. There's so many people in this blooming book, guys. There's so many people. Well, I, can't, I, I can't. I cannot think of his name. I can't think of his son's name. My brain has gone completely blank. Batman's dad. There we go. Uh, I would. I thought that Batman's dad was on the way there as well, but obviously not. Maybe it, 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 at least appears from the article that it was just Arthur that, that was going. Oh my goodness, guys. What is, what am I like? I, my brain's just gone completely blank. I, just, I, I cannot think of, of, of his name. What is going on? Papa Havlbovsky... Okay, this is insane, guys. Why can I not see? I, I've, I've got Cedric Diggory. My God, I apologise, guys. Look at loads of pictures of him. None of them were saying his name. Cedric Diggory. There we go. So, Mr. Diggory, Amos. There we go. I am so sorry about that, guys. Um, I thought he was going as well, but apparently not. So I'm a little bit murky, confused about actually what actually happened here. But you know, also Skitter's article could be for the lies, considering he hasn't even got the name right. Um, so Mad Eye's controversy is out. Presumably, uh, the Prophet must know that he's working as the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, right? He must do. It wasn't mentioned in the article though. Not not that not that Draco mentioned it. Draco shows a picture of Molly and Arthur on the page outside their house. Says, oh, what do you call a house? Oh, the usual Draco waffle. I bet Draco would find Spotted Dick and Uranus funny. That's a sense which I didn't think I'd be saying to them. Um, says that Molly could do with losing some weight. This is where we get the Yo Mama contest, guys. It literally is a Yo Mama contest. So back in the 90s... For whatever reason, in parts of America, you had people who basically say, your mama's so fat or your mama's so... You know. yeah, yeah, thank goodness we passed that. But yeah, uh, that was like a really big thing for like a few years for whatever reason. So that's what they do here. <laughs> like, run, like Harry and uh, Draco have a yo mama contest. The idea is that you're meant to push the other person to snapping, basically. Which, obviously, Harry wins. Um... Moody turns Drake. Uh, 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 I'm definitely skipping stuff here, surely. 
I am. I'm sorry. Harry and, her, and Hermione are holding Ron back, and Harry brings up Draco's mother's expression, uh, having the the expression of someone with dung under the nose. And he says, it, it, "Does you always have that, or is it just or is it just when you're there?" That's a pretty good line. That is a pretty good insult, I must admit, because it kind it kind of then deflects off the mother, which is good. It's just more about Draco, which is perfect. Uh, Draco didn't like it though. He says, "Don't talk about my mother and everything." Well, you just talking about Molly, dude. Seriously, like, yeah. It's Draco. It's Draco. Um, so Harry, I think, does get partially hit by something. It doesn't specify what it is. When, when he turns away, Draco does it from behind. Obviously, in the movie, this is much later on. Um, uh, but Mo Moody, like, instantly turned Draco in into a ferret. Uh, very different tone in the book, guys. Because I gotta, I, I gotta admit. In, in in the book, I didn't find it that funny. I, I, as in, I, I wasn't like, you know, saying, how could he do that or thing? But, but in the movie, you know, you instantly have the music like going, pop, 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 and you have McGonagall going, oh, what's going on? Uh, that's my impression of McGonagall, if you didn't know. It's basically Beaker from the Muppets. Um, sorry. Um, whereas in the book, it specifies that everyone is in complete terrified silence. And what's happening? Um, we do get it confirmed now that when, when, because um, he's talking to to Harry, making sure he's all right, and then he tells one of Crabbe and Goyle to keep away from the ferret, uh, whilst looking at Harry, and so it's confirmed that he can see through the back of his head, which is lovely. Um, uh, ferret scene happens much later in the movie. It really does. I, I was like, I, I was clicking forward like trying to get to, to to it and it's so much further in guys like much further in crazy it's good that they included it it is good that they included it but very different place though because this is really yeah it's kind of like moody's like proper introduction to harry really isn't it like proper introduction yeah maybe i'm, I'm not sure we'll see um Uh, the ferret scene happens much later in the movie. Harry just says, Lucy yes, here we go. So I, I mentioned this in the little apology video that I put out. Uh, how uh, Harry in, in the movie says how Lucius is vile and cruel. And you're just pathetic to to uh, to Draco. That is, that is like the blueprint of the changes that they made Harry have in the movies, guys. Because what he says in the book is mean about Draco's mother. He does then deflect it to being, oh, maybe it's just you, which is, uh, which is a nice touch. But it is a mean thing to say. Rightfully so, because of what Draco just said. Um, whereas the thing that, that Harry says in the, in the movie is, like, very weak. Very, very weak as an insult, you know? It really is. Uh, vile and cruel. Um, I remember, like, on, um, Resident Evil 1, when you find out who the villain is. Because I, 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 when you're playing as the lady, I can't remember her name. Um, when, when he, like, tells you the, his evil plan, which is going to, like, wipe out hundreds of thousands of, of people. She, like, goes, you're so cruel. That sums it up, yeah. <laughs> it's a quite, it's quite a light description of it quite frankly all right sorry don't know where that came from oh where am i actually where am i i oh, know oh, here we go yeah the the, the 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 movie version is a lot softer what harry actually says to draco everyone in the movie instantly apart from crab and goyle obviously and and um McGonagall instantly find it hilarious, which really takes away the moment, guys. The fact that a teacher is doing this, you get the feeling like everyone's like, whoa, okay, this is not normal. Teachers should be doing this. Whereas in the movie, it was like, oh, he's doing this. It's funny. Well, so, so I much prefer the book version of the fact that everyone is like taken aback by what is going on. He's a teacher. He shouldn't be doing this. This is actually really scary. He could do it to me. Uh, obviously, after it's all calmed down and uh, and Draco is back to normal, then everyone finds it funny. But in the moment, it's quite scary, guys. For me, anyway, maybe, maybe that's just my interpretation of it. 
Uh, Moody says he doesn't like people who attack their targets behind the, uh, who uh, t t t targets backed when their tar targets back is turned. I should say. Um, I mean, it's not great what he's doing to Draco, quite frankly. It's absolutely horrendous. I thought he was bouncing off the ground, but I don't think he was. <laughs> he was bouncing him in the air, wasn't he? Although Draco is phys physically hurt. Not seriously, but he is hurt when, when he gets when, when he comes around again. So McGonagall comes in. Uh, she seems horrified in the book. Although it is the same dialogue, though. So maybe it's just like the, the different performance. It is the same dialogue. We never uh, use transfiguration as a punishment. Uh, interesting that she says that. I wonder if that maybe it used to be used as a punishment. Probably not. Probably not. Or maybe some other schools use it as, a, as a transfiguration, maybe. Um, Draco's turned back to, to, to human. Um, what was it that Draco accepted, uh, attempted to hit Harry with? Yeah, I, I have no idea. It would have been interesting to, to hear, to be honest. Um... He mouths something to, to Mad Eye about my father, or something like that. And Mad Eye, like, walks straight up to him. It's very intimidating, guys. It really is. Uh, Approaches him saying he knows um, he knows his father from old. He tells Draco to tell Lucius he will be keeping an eye on him. I got down here. Is that a threat? Which is weirdly enough, you know, what Mad Eye says when Draco says, I, I, uh, my father will. And then, like, Mad Eye's like, why is that a threat? I think that what, what Ma Moody here is a massive threat, obviously, you know, considering this is Moody, in inverted commas, with, with good reason with Lucius. But again, with kids around, to a kid, not great. Not great. <laughs> Either way. Grabs Draco by the arm. In the movie, he takes Harry away for literally no reason from what I gather. But that I can work out, it's quite strange. When he says, come here, Harry. He's like, oh, all right. <laughs> it's like kind of out of nowhere. Um... But he grabs, grabs Draco's arm and marches off to see Snape. Obviously, his head, his uh, head um, thing, uh, house head. Um, Ron absolutely loves it. At this point, Ron absolutely loves it and says about how he he's trying to like burn into his memory the exact moments and everything. Uh, they do, do they 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 do all laugh at it. Uh, but but Hermione does raise the fact that he could Draco could have been seriously hurt, which I think is absolutely fair. Um, F, G, and Lee say how cool Moody is in the uh, Defense Against the Dark Arts class uh, because he's so experienced, you know, all the things that he's done and everything. And of course, like, Ron does, like, like say, oh, you, you, you're ruining the moment of mine and everything. It's just brilliant. So there you go, guys. There are two chapters. Not that many no notes for that chapter, but both really good transitional chapters. Again, they're some of the best chapters, in my opinion. Uh, let's get over to the good old book club. So here we go, guys. The casual, relaxing Harry Potter book club. Always an absolute blooming treat, guys. Like I say, if you back the Patreon for as little as you want, you get access to this blog, where you can uh, post your own questions and, and comments and thoughts on these chapters. There are a few rules uh, like regarding the length of them and everything like that, because the longer the comment, the less time I can spend replying to it. And so there are going to be some like really long comments that we're going to be reading here, guys. Yeah, I won't be giving my thoughts on it as much as shorter comments, you know. It's, it's, it's just to keep the whole thing flowing, you know. And so these are for chapter 12 and 13. What great chapters. And much there's a lot to discuss, guys. So let's get straight in there with Slim. Hope you had a great Christmas and New Year, Veggie. Thank you very much, Slim. We got, we get the, uh, I, that's that's going to be the new Hi Veggie, isn't it? Because <laughs> Hi ha, Veggie is usually how comments start. Uh, we get the introduction of one of my favourite minor characters in the series. The mis the, um, the, the man, the myth, the legend, Dennis Creevy. Is that sarcasm? I'm not sure. A paragon of positive thinking. Ah, okay. How many characters in the story would be overjoyed to have fallen into they could be rescued by a fantastic beast? Exactly. It's very, very Gryffindor. Well, I guess brave. There has to be a bravery and stupidity, you know, balance really, doesn't there? It probably a, a good thing Oliver Wood left at the at uh, at the end of book three, I don't think Dumbledore would have survived telling Wood the Quinch will, uh, the Quinch Cup wouldn't be happening this year. That's a good point. What about other players? Presumably, there's going to be other Gryffindors who are going to be leaving this year. Wow, great point. Can I have a look? 
Oh, look at Uranus too, Lavender. Even in the Wizarding World, Uranus jokes are funny. <laughs> Fun fact. Uranium is named from the planet. Weird, huh? Ah, I, I, you know what? That is very interesting. So they were learning stuff. They shift things around quite a bit. When I said it's inappropriate, guys, I guys. I hope I did come off as being like, you know, whoa, it's not like you're really shit or anything, but it is, it is an appropriate thing to say. Okay. Um, uh, they, they shift things around quite a bit time-wise in the film. Oh my goodness, yes. As you know from you, your surprise at the absence of pumpkin pasty, I, I, I've not forgiven the book since. They shift things around quite a yeah. Were you expecting the ferret scene from the movies to appear in, in the books or appear this early? As I remember it, it felt like it was the Draco scene. Because I'm running my mind through the rest of... I'm sure there are other Draco scenes, guys. There must be. But it did feel like it felt a little bit planted in there. So maybe I wasn't expecting it. That's a good question, Slim. I think I kind of... 50-50. I would have been shocked if it wasn't there. But I'm not surprised that it was. Slim, thank you very much for your comment. Boom. Sandra! Oh, hi, Veggie! I wonder why Tronley made the class study planetary movements they have a compulsory astronomy class maybe maybe the astronomy teacher and astronomy are at loggerheads when it comes to the philosophy of what things mean and everything because presumably the astronomy class teacher does no, she probably does okay that is she isn't it it's the blooming uh, spinny bobby isn't it i can't remember blooming name um i know we had a discussion here about the overlap of Defense Against Dark Arts and Careful Magical Creatures. Maybe it's similar? Yeah, now I think about it, I don't think they would be at loggerheads, would they? Because even even the, the astronomy teacher isn't just going to be teaching science, are they? They're going to talk about the magical meaning. What would have been nice is a little line for, for Tron, and maybe she did say this in between the pages. Tron would like say, now, uh, me and Thingy Bobby have been, have like, um, have got this project for you to do. And then like, it's like a collaboration sort of thing. Oh wow, that's a great, that's a great point, Sandra. Very well made. Thank you very much for making it. <coughs> I don't mean Natasha. Natasha! Hi, Veggie! Such a great, such great chapters. So much to discuss. But I've been waiting for this chapter to discuss one of my favourite jokes of Ron. <laughs> the Uranus one. The joke was not translated into Russian at all. Can you believe it? Wow. Okay, let's find out what that means then. The dialogue in the Russian book was truly, um... This is your Uran, my dear. Ron, can I look at Uran too? Lavender. God, wow, that's bizarre, <laughs> Natasha. Uh, that's it. So for many years, I couldn't understand why they got extra homework <laughs> from Trolley. That's amazing. That's crazy. You see, in Russian, pla pla plants like Uranus are called Uran, Yur, and Tuba, Tubi. Um, so the word play is impossible because Ur Uranus is not in tune with the phrase Uranus. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I find the description of this so funny. Ha. Uh, they don't, they didn't even try to rephrase it to keep Ron's vulgar joke. Yeah, I guess it would have been difficult to. God, that's crazy that they didn't even, yeah, that's, that's bizarre. Um, 
Years later, when I listened to the English audiobooks for the first time, Fry is brilliant, it really is, and heard the line, that that is when it hit me. That's amazing. That is amazing <laughs> for so long you didn't understand it. Um, uh, I couldn't believe JK wrote this into a children's book. Oh, believe me, that is the most common kid joke in the world. So it's, it's what kids would say is what I'm saying. Can you? Did you get it from first listen? I hope you did. Oh, yes. <laughs> Natasha, like I say, it is like the most common. Whenever anyone, scientists, like you, anyone at all, mentions the planet Uranus, everyone, everyone, as a serious actor would say, uh, everyone is thinking the same thing. And it is this joke that Rod decided to say out loud. Um, the joke portrays Ron's character so much. Initially, J JK planned for Ron to to swear a lot. Well, they do a bit. But, but pub publishers censored it. And these small jokes and unsaid curse words are meant to show Ron's brilliant personality. That's true. We do have a lot of... Harry couldn't believe what Ron said. Instead of actually hearing what it's saying. Very true, very true. P.S. Personal, personality that the um, personality that the movie lost completely. We were talking about Harry earlier on as well. Draco Malfoy, the amazing bouncing ferret. How could they cut this, that, this line full of film? Oh, that's right. That's what Ron refers to him as. After the fact, isn't it? That that would have... Oh, I guess because Ron's at that point not, not in with Harry, isn't he? So they would have had to give it to someone else. Anyway, great comment, Natasha. That's that's amazing. Adios. It's interesting how Harry's uh, Harry is fantasizing about winning the Tri Wizard tournament. He hates being uh, famous because of what Voldemort did to his family, but he wouldn't mind being a celebrity for his own accomplishments, being a professional Quidditch player and winning the. Tri Try was a tournament. You make a, the exact point that I was going to say. You 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 did you 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 did with the last sentence. Yes, absolutely. At, at, at the World Cup, he was thinking like him, as in not not the boy who lived, not Molly and James's pair uh, uh, child. Um, you know, not, not the one who defeated Voldemort at Hogwarts. Not the one who. Um, who found the Chamber of Secrets uh, and defeated the, the Basilisk and everything. He wanted, yeah, it, it, for his Quidditch skills, which is what he enjoys. He doesn't enjoy fighting Basilisk with, snake, with, with swords. Yeah, I feel like that. I feel like that's the difference. Dumbledore getting distracted by Fred, Fred and George and Professor McGonagall having uh, to step in to keep him on track. Oh yes, with the joke. It's nice that even in the book books get as even as the books get darker, we still get so some funny moments like this. It's, these chapters are full of funny moments. I hate that the, this in the movie Dumbledore is always angry and shouting f for some reason, completely out of character, and will still ha still haven't got to the moment. Absolutely, I thought it was going to be in these chapters. Quite frankly, when I saw the titles. Um, you're right. I, I, like, like when I was saying about how when Bertie Crouch says about how there's going to be an age restriction and everyone's shouting, particularly Fred and George, who's like saying, you don't know what you're doing. You would expect a headmaster to then actually shout angrily, but it's very out of character for Dumbledore, though. Book Dumbledore. We learn that... Actually, it's so interesting. The f oh, it's the second movie with Gambon, and of course it is. Ignore me. We learned that many house elves are working in the kitchen at Hogwarts and once again get confirmation from a character that this is supposed to be uh, on the good side. Ron, Ron and Percy last time are nearly at its neck this time. That their situation is considered complete, absolutely normal. Yeah, it's it, like it, it, like anything else is, is laughable to Nick, isn't it? What do you think and, and of Hermione's reaction to this information? I, I respect her for not wanting to eat. That's obviously not fun. that's obviously not a, a, a workable protest. Um, I'm with Hermione. I'm with Hermione right now, and, and Nick's reaction to to to, to 
Hermione like saying about all those things makes me even more with Hermione. I would imagine there's going to be more to it down the line, but we shall see. But that's how I currently am with, with Elias. Thank you so much for your comments. CJ! Hi, Veggie. Good day from down under. No way. No way. Elimination Chamber's coming your way, CJ. Next month. Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley's ridiculous. I think I, I personally think that Rhea Ripley's the, the the greatest female wrestler of all time already, guys. I actually do. I think that, that she's got the promo skill. She's got the 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 presence. I think she's, uh, she's amazing in the ring. I think she's just great. And she's Australian, and she will be defending her title in WWE Elimination Chamber next month. Sorry, sorry for the random wrestling talker. Um. I'm a first time commenter, CJ. Sorry for taking go taking your first comment and down such a tangent. So glad to be a part of the book club. You're very welcome, CJ. Chapter 12. Hermione is my favourite. She's a 14-year-old girl who just discovered she has a voice and she can stick up for for issues she deems important. I love the way you worded that. She's a 14-year-old girl who is is just discovering she has a voice. Which you compare that to previous Hermione. That's such a word. That, that's brilliant. I love it. She is not even deterred by the lack of enthusiasm around her. Absolutely. Even with people laughing at her about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> laughing at what she said, yeah. Uh, chapter 13. It took me ages to get to the July midwinter joke. Me being from Southern Hemisphere, July is midwinter. Of course, CJ, because you, you you have your uh, Christmas during uh, during the summer, don't you? Right? I believe that's right. It's, it's, well, a lot of Australians, I don't want to generalise, a lot of them like have barbecues on, on the beach and everything, don't they, for us? That's so true. Oh, wow. So we got we, we the Russian thing just now. We got the, the Australian thing now. This book makes no sense, guys. No one's mentioned Spotted Dick yet either, I noticed. <laughs> that's so true i found it so funny i understand now obviously oh absolutely yes that's so that's that's so if, if harry was australian then trawley would be right <laughs> thanks for doing these book reviews. or maybe she just met australia at the time uh, but thanks for doing these book reviews i have been trying to convince people for years to read the books and no bite oh that's a shame so this is a real treat for me CJ, I know the feeling there. Oh, love from Australia as well. Yeah, uh, very, very rarely when I suggest stuff to people do, they actually check it out, unfortunately. Uh, the thing which I, cheek I, I keep on trying to get my brothers to watch is Arcane. Because I, 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 I have to mention Arcane at least once every book, guys. But that had an effect on me. That really did. It, it's so good. It is so good. Um, and it's got... Uh, I didn't know anything about League of Legends going in. And you don't need to know anything about League of Legends going in. In fact, I actually think it's better if you don't. But since then, I've learned about League of Legends and everything. But um, I, I, the amount of time where, I said, where I've like, you know... Me and my brother will be watching something and someone will say something and says, Oh, that's similar to a line that someone said in Arcane. And my brother's like, right. <laughs> Just trying to get him to watch it. It's okay. I guess it's not for everyone, but yeah. It, uh, yeah, trying to get people to watch stuff that you really like is often quite difficult, isn't it? Or read books like that, that you really like. Yeah, I know the pain, CJ. Thank you so much for your first comment, CJ. It was excellent. Hope to see you next time. Frederick. Or Freddy. I have a I got a feeling. Sorry, who sang that? I got a feeling. Is that a Beatles song? I got a feeling. I, feel, I think it is. Anyway, I have a feeling these chapters will seal Veggie's love and appreciation for Hermione. I, you're not you're not wrong, Freddy. Uh Freddy, Freddy, sorry. Um I also can't wait to see your reaction, Veggie, to finding out that Hogwarts run runs on elf magic. Like I said earlier on, Fre Freddy, um I, I'm pretty sure that in my in my reaction to the Hogwarts trailer, in fact some people actually said I shouldn't have reacted to it because of spoilers. To be fair, um, yeah, some of you guys did tell me that actually, and I, and I do apologise. Uh, but I did see that they were elves, and, and you know, because I'd only just watched uh, Devil Eyes Part Two, I, I, I went Dobby and got loaded up and say, not everyone, not all elves are Dobby Veggie. Pretty insensitive for me, really, wasn't it? 
But yeah, I did know about that. But I didn't know what I I I, I didn't know what capacity though. And it runs at a hundred of them, which does seem like a lot. Anyway. Also, can't wait to see your reaction video finally. Uh, ethically, ethically, ethically speaking, there is a lot of things wrong with about the situation for sure. Without spoiling anything, all I can say is that the book does a good job of not dropping the issue, Freddy. It feels like that's the case, Freddy. It really does, and I appreciate that that, that is going to be that that is going to be the case. Great comment. Thank you so much for making it. Kenzit! Hope you had a great Christmas, Veggie! Hermione's reaction to the house elves at Hogwarts. I'm surprised she hadn't known since she's she's read Hogwarts a history. But I guess it's the same philosophy of a house elf is better is best when they're not seen. They're even not mentioned as well, so yeah. Unless the book has no mention of that house elves, but didn't she ever wonder who cooked the, the food or cleans the dorms? That's a good question. Because I would have thought, oh, it must be magic food. How do I do that? And then she'd go to the library and say, oh, there's nothing about magic food. That's a good point. Cleaning the dorms, not so much. Oh, no, sorry. That, sorry. They're both great points. The dorms, I would have assumed there's someone employed here to do it. Be it a house elf or not, but someone employed. Whereas the food, that, yeah. I don't know, I, and you know what? She probably just would have thought there's a bunch of uh, of magical chefs, cooks, I should say. That's that's where her mind would have gone, wouldn't it? Although for her to not question that is interesting. That does seem a little bit off character. Also, not sure if you would have noticed, but in the films, the Patel sisters were both in Gryffindor. I bloomin' thought so. Yes. What do you think about them actually being in different houses? Considering how few Ravenclaws there are, it is insane that they took a Ravenclaw and gave him to Gryffindor. I mean, I could say maybe it's because they wanted to have those scenes where I say, Hi, Harry, in, in the in the uh, common room. But, you know, you are, a Gryffindor is allowed to take a, a non, another house member into the communal room, right? I think, I think so. It's not like they cannot get, go in at all. I think. I could be wrong. Uh, what do you think of it? Uh, think about them actually being in different houses. I think it's very interesting. And I, I, I appreciate, even though it was very short, we hearing about the fact that that, it, that is the case. Especially since since we see so much of, of family being in the same house with very different expectations like it's like like serious very true um i feel like they, they just must have had different interests maybe padme pa padma padme padma is a lot more into learning stuff and yeah i feel like that's probably the difference great comment kenzit um yeah it, i i felt i felt like line in the book so re rewarding when we heard a little bit about that gaffnob Greetings. I don't. It, it doesn't matter. If it, if it, that's from a previous one. As always, really, 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 really. right. <laughs> Chapter twelve. Ah, Hogwarts has house elves uh, and lots of them. Also, uh, explanation as to why, if your family does not have one, it is unlikely you have ever seen one. They are meant to be remain inconspicuous in absolutely Hermione is normally so logical what so experience would her lead her to think that how that, that else would get pay sick sick leave or other stuff I don't think she's she, she's not saying it's like she expects it she's saying it like but that is the case right she's panicking like because she's she just had this revelation I don't I don't think she's thinking they do have sick leave and holiday and all that sort of thing um What's Filch's job? They have else for, for cleaning. Teachers take care of the hall monitors. Neville has uh, has more than just a, a bad memory. He also is not that observant. He did not notice that people in front of him jumped the step. Yes, that is something which we missed in, in, our, in our notes. Uh, the super 
Cullen Brothers, Cullen Brothers have a theory. Filch is a actually a poltergeist. Super Cullen Brothers. I don't know who they are. I'm afraid. I kind of a kind of a kind of anti peeves. I think it holds merit. Thoughts have not seen a theory. Thoughts have not seen the theory video yet at all. Uh, I don't know why they'd keep it secret. Yeah, uh, like uh, the motive behind that, I don't understand. Uh, moving on, because there's lots of like uh, separate lines. Uh, many book ex exclusive references. Which one? Which ones, if any, do you think will be relevant later? Oh well, De Dennis being there, I feel like he, he might be uh, relevant. Do not read in book club, just info for w info worth the time to read. Okay, I I'll stop. Oh, yes, yeah, so stuff about Super Cullen Brothers. Thank you, uh, Gaffab. I will read that later. Thank you so much for your comment. Greatly appreciate it. And remember to like it, Veggie. I have been liking it. Okay, good. Uh, Florin. Hi, Veggie. Since I listened along, you're your reading um, to the uh, Stephen Fry version, I would like to inform you that I was quite disappointed he didn't actually sing the Sorting Hat song. In the German version, we get quite a catchy tune. Very, in I wouldn't mind hearing that, Florin. Uh, and in the Jim Dale version, in the well, that was technically the American version, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Even though he's English. Uh, regarding Rita Sakita, did do you think she is just bad at researching, or does she get Arthur's name intentionally wrong for a bit of ex ex the extra bit of ridicule? I can't, I don't think the latter. I don't think so, because that is, one, is making her look like an idiot to anyone who knows. And also, it, it, it almost lets her, it, 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 The thing is, not many people know who Arthur is, but to anyone who does, it would show that the article itself isn't really watertight either. So, I don't know what it is. Maybe it is bad research. I'm going to be keeping an eye on going forward, to be honest, Florian, because it is very interesting that that name was odd. And it's pretty different. Arnold and Arthur are not that similar names. Uh, yeah, very great question there, Florian. Thank you very much for making it. Jacob, okay, we learned the tournament used to be held every five years and other students could enter. They have changed the rules so now on, only those who are 17 or older can enter. Does this mean if the tournament was successful, they would have it every year for those who have just turned 17? Or will it still be every five years and it's just lack it's just luck if it's on a year the year you're 17 that's a good point about the fact that yeah that is that is potluck isn't isn't it but was this always a one-off no but we hear that that it is something that is always being trying to be introduced and so i would imagine that they were trying to get it back to being a regular thing if it was going to be an every year thing I'm going to guess no. No, yeah. I'm going to guess no, because it means that the, the the majority, I think, of the last year, not last year. I guess it could be last year. Is it the last year that, that, that you had to be for 17? Um, the majority of that year you would be spending outside of your school. So no, I, I don't think it would have been every year, to be honest. Good question, though, Jacob. It really made me think. Very well made. John. Imagine how Oliver would have react reacted to Dumbledore cancelling Quidditch if he was still at Hogwarts. Absolutely. I'd also like to point out that Ron's joke about Uranus so far is the dirtiest joke in the series. I can't argue with that. Certainly not. Also, Ron offering Hermione spotted dick. It's... I know that's a, a real dessert, but out of context... It also kind of sounds like a... Oh, absolutely sounds like a dirty joke. Don't worry, John. You're not alone, you're not alone, there, alone there. One more thing. Like, um... Not Kojak. What's his name? Columbo. One more thing. Um, the movie... 
so far has made two scenes Ron dress robes and dress robes and Malfoy getting turned into a ferret happen later than they did in the book very good point why do you think the filmmakers made that decision? Uh, I, I think I can explain the robes. I feel like the robe one makes sense to keep it close to the event. Because in the movie, it's going to be so, like, like Ron's going to say, I'm not wearing them. And then like, an hour and a half later. And also, we didn't get the home stuff with, with Ron, did, did we? So they would have had to skip over that. So yeah, okay, so that scene, because that scene was never going to happen because that part in the movie was not, that part of the book is not in the movie. So they would have had to shift it up to Ron unpacking on the first night back at Hogwarts and then finding it. I think it was a good solution, what they did in the movie, and they kept it close to the, the, the joke of him having to wear it. I think it's quite clever. Um... The, the ferret thing, I, I like I said, I was clicking through saying, where is it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the reason for that is. But then again, the, the, this this whole first chapter is like so many other things. They're really shifting around so much. John, great question. I appreciate it. Rhea, this is my favorite sorting hat song. Excellent. Can't believe they didn't put it in the, at least one of the movies. Hopefully it'll be in the TV show. Um, you get more backstory and understanding of Hogwarts and the students in this one one poem than in the entire film. But that's actually very true. Maybe they didn't want to overwhelm people. I, I, maybe, they, maybe they didn't want to make people think that it was going to be significant. Well, it kind of is significant. I'm not sure. Can we take a, another moment to appreciate Fred Weasley? He... Yes, he can make all his school friends laugh in, intentionally uh, intentionally at the drop of a hat, but gets in the entire school to laugh, including Dumbledore, including me, from sheer excitement is another, another thing altogether. I love him. That is actually a great moment. And it really breaks the ice with the whole uh, Mad-Eye moment as well. Question, would you rather hear the end of Dumbledore's joke about the troll, the hag, uh, uh, and, the and, and the leprechaun going into a bar, or the end of... Ty oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, the end of Tyrion's uh, tale about him going to a, 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 a brothel with a honeycomb and a jackass. That's very true, because that is something that is... I can't say that, but it is, it's teased a couple of times. I can say it probably like that. I mean, probably the Dumbledore one, because it's probably going to be less... <laughs> I mean, we know that Dumbledore's one was going to be bad, but I don't think it was going to be disgusting, though. <laughs> and so, probably Dumbledore's one, personally. Since I decided to mix up two different uh, 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 worlds, let's have some fun and imagine a chapter featuring Dumbledore and his psychic, Tyrion Lannister, in Gilderoy Lockhart's book, um... Hol holidays with hacks. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I mean, he absolutely straight up would be a Gryffindor, wouldn't he? We've got the lion, he's got the colours. Jeez. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Game of Thrones, guys. Jeez. It just went so... It just went so off the rails when they ran out of uh, writing uh, like the, the book material. But it was it was a, it was an event when it was good, guys. When it was on, it was so good. Rhea, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your great questions. Mm. Becky, hello. I'm not caught up with these videos yet. That's fine. That's fine, Becky. So have hello to me in the future when I finally get around to watching this. Fantastic. Though I'm sorry this is going to be a very boring boring observation, but when Hermione was asking if the house elves got pensions, that seemed odd to me. I never would have imagined the wizard world having a pension system. Okay. This is in this is fascinating, Becky. Um, I guess I assumed that everyone worked until death. Uh, well, certainly the case for house elves, isn't it? As wizards live a lot longer than muggles and don't face the same sorts of health decline 
that we do with age. Now, Becky, I'm just going to pause it just for a second. This is Hermione that we're, we're talking about. So maybe... But then again, Nick knows... I'm pretty sure that Nick says uh, house elves don't want those things. I guess there's a chance that he doesn't know what a pension is. And Hermione could be incorrectly thinking. I mean, we know, we know she does a lot of research, guys, but she can't know everything. The difference between um, uh, Muggles and, and Wizard World. Maybe she's assuming that there are pen that, that there is a pension system. Maybe. Maybe. Also, in a world that deals only in cash and gold, with no credit cards or evidence of checks, um, I presume a, a pension seems so out of place. <coughs> True, but there has to be some sort of... Man, that is, a, that is a great point, Becky. That is, that is an aspect. This isn't boring at all. This is absolutely fascinating. I, I'm going to be keeping out for it, like any payments that are made without actually handing over cash. Because there has to be a, a way of doing it. Well, I guess not if you've got like unlimited pockets and stuff. I'm not sure. Anyway, looking forward to catching up and so I can hear your thoughts. Much love. Stay awesome. Thank you, Be Becky. And thank you so much for, for your wonderful comment. I know a few people like watch them in bulk, in fact, and so I uh, hope that I uh, hope hope to uh, see you uh, soon. I hope that you're watching this soon. I don't know what I mean. Anyway, Becky, thank you so much for your comment. Maddie, hi, Veggie. Peeps, water balloons. Hermione's uh, hunger strike. Dumbledore's unfinished joke. <laughs> These could have all been the names of the book. Uh, Eleni's curse, cursing off um, her acne. Last ended screwed. Lavender's Uranus and some of the best parts in these chapters. Hope you have a good 2024. Maddie, that is a great, that is a summarization of these chapters done perfectly. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, which I, I I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I, 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 I'm so bad at reading your name. Hi, Veggie. A couple of questions from a fellow, fellow Hufflepuff. Uh, what had surprised you the most so far in this book? It's got to be, like, spending time with, with, with the Dursleys at the start. I think it just is generally just the stuff that there's left out in the movie. See, which I know is a, which is a large chunk of what we're, what we're reading here. But um, what is a piece of information that's added context or depth to what you knew from, from the movie? Well, again, in a way, I guess what Hermione says about like about the Pavati sisters, but that's so such a small moment though. This information that added context or depth to what you knew from from the movie. Uh, there we go. D Dumbledore's description of the of the uh, Tri Wizards tournament. That that was great because I'm pretty certain that information is not given initially when Dumbledore's explaining it because he's he, he's kind of selling it as this terrifying thing in the movie. Uh, whereas in, in, in the in the in the book, he's giving like actual information, historical information. That's that's really helped out. Because I, I I I had no idea. I, I assumed that it was happening each year, but with different schools, which is obviously completely wrong. Glad you're enjoying the, the book. There's so much more to come. Any theory so far? Happy New Year. Only that Dennis is going to have some sort of hand to play in it. Not a massive one, but I feel like Dennis is going to have a scene where he's going to be focused. There we go. Thank you so much for your comments. I hope you have a, 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 a have a happy New Year as well. Jenny, ha, Veggie. I wonder why Harry and Ron keep t taking divination classes when they both hate it so much. Why didn't they just drop out like Hermione did? That is a great point, point, Jenny. Particularly Harry. Particularly Harry, that's a very good point. Maybe Ron uh, had her reasons to keep trolling in the story, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, Harry absolutely has reason to get out of there. Maybe he wanted to give it a year ago, and then because of what happened with, with her final vision, he felt like he had to stick around. 
But he, he's constantly down on her in, in his mind, I should say. We see one of our, my favorite scenes. Draco, the amazing bouncing ferret. There's the line. One of the few great things they kept in, in the movie. Too bad they didn't keep Ron's Uranus choke too. I'm not surprised they took that out, to be honest, Chani. But yes. Happy 2024, Veggie. Thank you so much, Chani. That, 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 that's very kind of you. I hope you have a wonderful 2024 as well. Mel. Hi, Veggie. I don't have much to say except that I particularly like these chapters. They packed with detail that have been removed from the films and yet make up the magic of Hogwarts. The descriptions alone are always just such a joy in these. Like the Sorting Hat Ceremony, the Sorting Hat Song, the mention of the lake. Very good point, actually. Yeah, that's, that's actually true. Actually, that's going to be probably going to pay off later on as well. Um, the, go the Ghosts of the Four Houses. McGonagall fighting with Peeves, um, Dumbledore's fine sense of humour, and the description of the boys' dormitories, the first days of class. All of these details make up the life of the school and the joy of, of back to school, joy uh, only at Hogwarts. Exactly, <laughs> I know you email. And of course, the cosy elements that, like, like the description of the app uh, appetising food. The weather that miss from that, that's missing from the movies and the chapter chapter twelve is the perfect summary of what I like to find in the book. Pure gold for me. No, it really is. It, I, 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 even Moody's description was just so beautifully done. But the fact that it is like this feeling of being back and you're having described it to you, even though you know it, it's just like a refamiliarizing yourself with with them. It's wonderful. Oh, and since most of us will be mentioning Ron's choke, which is so funny, I'll add that I love Harry's response to Trelawney. I think I'm right in saying, my dear, that you were born in uh, in, in midwinter. No, Harry said. Harry, I was born in July. I don't. I I I don't know why, but it always made me laugh. Yeah, it's very blunt, isn't it? It's all like, nope, you're wrong. <laughs> Brilliant. Again, a big risk for for, some, for for a charlatan, which, you know, if, if she was, to make. So that, that makes me believe her more. Mel, great comment, and you're right. It's just such wonderful summarization. Q, it matters, Reggie. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Happy New Year. Trying to make this short, but we'll see. Ron's personality and teenage boyness <coughs> really shines through in these chapters. He really... His funny, immature moments and jokes hit a little hard. Oh, sorry, a little different on this read-through. Now that now that I work with kids about that age, ah, yes, I bet, I bet so. I can imagine several of my students saying similar things. There's also the continuing. Pardon me, Q. I'm not I'm not yawning because of your comment. There's also the continuing build-up of his uh, resentment towards being poor and his family's lack of social status and obviously love for his family but at the age especially it's hard to bear up with the mocking and embarrassment well especially with Bloom and Draco around I agree. Uh, two, I always feel felt like the movies could have done better at making Moody look and act scary, uh, uh, scary and scarred. <sighs> it's true. I mean, the actor that they chose for it is great, but that that is maybe they didn't want to make him too scary. Great point. Um, the actor does does a good job with with what he's given, but I think they made him a little too comic comic and sand, sanded down the character's edges to make him more palatable and ultimately less interesting. Yeah, it's true. I mean, there are, he has his moments, like the, the defense against the dark arts class of them is a horrible scene, guys, in, in the movie. Uh, would be interesting to see when we get to that in, in the book. It really will, actually. That's going to be a big one. Uh, three. The house elves issue continues so I can't say much conclusively but I will say it's a more nuanced issue than any characters allow allows 
for so far. Oh, I presume so. I presume so. And it's hard to analyse because the real life parallels are so heavy. So separating and balancing the doyalist outside real world explanation of influence. Oh, wow. Fantastic. And um, whatism. What, Watson, Watson, Watsonian, a universe explanation, headcanon, and characterizations. Wow. Uh, perspectives get very tricky, oh, I'm sure. Shout out to Dean and Seamus, continuing their iconic every time, to be iconic every time they appear. First, first person now this. I know, it's bloody disgusting. What a horrible day at Hogwarts, but they will all regret coming back after the first day. Q, thank you so much for your comment, and I apologise for yawning at one point. Dara, Merry Belated Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. Thank you so much, Dara. Uh, I, haven't, I, I haven't opened the Christmas uh, thing that you sent. Mad-Eye, how cool is he? That's what uh, Fred and George say. And Lee. Uh, more like, how cruel and unprofessional is he? I, I completely agree with that. I, I, I still love Draco, Malfoy, and the amazing bouncing ferret, and... And, and I'm Slytherin. I'm sure. I'm sure. You can't... I, I, can't, I can't imagine there are many uh, Slytherins who, you know, def defend Draco to the hill. Seriously. Uh, however, does anyone else have a problem with him being very open in a school about old friends? Yeah. It, and, also, and also saying that to a kid as well, regardless of who his father is. Uh, we learn he is, was, a bad wizard catcher and he more or less openly talked about Malfoy's father and Snape. It's true, that's pretty messed up. Presumably, Draco is going to tell uh, Lucius as well. I remember that used to, to bother me when the book came out. It seems very bi biased on Moody's part. Hope your 2024 start, start great. I... I Moody is someone who is retired, who has gone through a heck of a lot and also we know there's more to it than that but so maybe that has made him like you know very judgmental and like keeping an eye on people for for yeah i feel like it's it's his experience that have made him into that to be honest dara great comment thank you so much for making it jake happy new year veggie thank you too trick i wonder why quidditch was cancelled for the tron uh, tron wizard tournament dumbledore says stuff will be busy but what exactly is there to do that can't be outsourced they do say that the professors are going to be busy weirdly enough yeah because because it, it is run by the teachers there's no uh, like like the like the oh, i guess Barty, of course the ministry do it to an extent as well don't they that's true um as far as we can tell madame hooch seems to be the only one directly involved in uh, the administration of Quidditch. So she's lost half her job alongside a significant majority of students losing their hobby. Yeah, and some of them for, for the last year as well. Um, I guess that they don't want school activities to be too focused between games and sports, maybe. Maybe that's it. The fact that it's something that is going to be a spectator thing for most students. There's only, there's only going to be one of each year. Maybe that's more as... Um, poor Mr. Weasley. Oh, hang on. Uh, international cooperation wouldn't seem worth it to to me as a student, especially if I were too young to, 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 to enter. I think JKR just couldn't be bothered writing about Quidditch this year. There's also that one. I mean, she'd already done it with the World Cup, hadn't she? Maybe that's yeah. Maybe that's it. They didn't want to have to to have the talk. Maybe it was it, it, yeah. I mean, Harry would probably not be in the in the Quidditch World Cup because he's in the Goblet of Fire. So maybe they could just say it's happening, but it wasn't important. Paul Miss Weasley is really getting it in the press so far in this book. When Amos Diggory said Arthur is the only one who can get Moody off. Did he actually mean Arthur is the one who we want to throw under the bus? Oh, now that's interesting. Mr. Weasley can't have been the only person the ministry 
adept at modifying memories. Oh, absolutely. And or are those wizards all employed to obliviate innocent Muggle campsite owners instead? I presume that they were under the ministry. That's a good question, though. Lastly, there are some interesting theories I've read about Trelawney's Were You Born in Midwinter? Oh. Guess that I won't derail right detail right now, though you may be able to guess from having seen the movies. But it's definitely interesting reading theories that suggest her ramblings aren't pure bumpkin. Uh, they feel like the sort of excuses Lambda and Pavati would write. That's, a, that's also very true, yes. It must be the Voldemort thing, right? Either Voldemort's birth or when Molly and uh, James died, which I can't remember what time of year that was. I honestly can't. No, it's Halloween, wasn't it? Ooh, midwinter, Halloween. Uh, I'm not sure. That's very interesting. But like I say, it could be Tom Riddle's birthday. Great, great, great point, Jake. And I, that sounds like an interesting theory, if, if, if that is what it is. Thank you so much for making a comment. Maria, uh, the blast ended scroots. <laughs> scroots. I feel like I'm saying it wrong each time. They are quite possibly one of the grossest, most unpleasant creatures in the series. They do sound disgusting. Right alongside pus plants in herbology. Yes, I'd say the plants are worse, to be honest. Um, I remember being totally disgusted, scared of them when I first read the book. I hate to agree with Malfoy, but it truly seems like there's no point to raising them. Yeah, and the thing is, Hagrid probably hasn't thought it through that much. So it does make me think there may not be less. It may not be reason to it. What do you think of Mad-Eye? He def he's definitely an interesting, exciting character. But he definitely should not be a teacher. I completely agree with that, yes. Um, what he did to Malfoy is totally unethical. But also super entertaining and satisfying it's true the threatening at the end though about his father and everything that is that is you know outside of the ferret thing very wrong as well draco malfoy the amazing bouncing ferret this seems to be the quote of these chapters guys that, that went completely over my head just like malfoy what did what do you think of hermione's take on the house elf situation i'm still with her at this point i think she's uh in disputably right for, from a moral perspective. It's hard to interpret that the house elves do as everything other, are they other than slave labour. Clearly it's normalised in the wizarding world but it's unconscious unconceivable uncon from a muggle point of view. Yeah, which is why I'm amazed that other students, there must be other students who, who say it. And I'm Nick's reaction to it. It's very interesting. It means that no other student said, ever said it to him, presumably. Uh, Maria, thank you so much. Oh, no, we're not done yet. I also have to agree with Hermione and um, uh, her Hermione that Harry and Ron should have dropped divination. That's true. She does suggest it, doesn't she? What's the point of them taking that class if they don't think it has any value. Although I don't expect teenage boys to wait, always make logical decisions, lol. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the main thing is that they wanted to stay together in classes, but they're both not having a good time at this point. And so, yeah, it's it's true. Uh, and the fact that Hermione even said, well, you should have dropped out. She's actually on the money there. Maria, thank you so much for your comment. Joe, happy new year to everyone. Chapter 12, Nick was dressed, was dressed tonight. In his usual doublet, but with a particularly large ruff. A oh, ruff, yes. Uh, means, which means they change clothes. That is a good point. Or maybe only additions. How do they do that? Maybe they can swap with each other. Oh my goodness! That that opens a whole blooming galaxy of theories there doesn't it because they wouldn't be able to just choose what they wear at any point and just make it happen instantly because he would always have that rough on wouldn't he 
Wow! Ghost changing clothing. That is something which I've never heard of before. That's a great point. Um, oh, unless the unless the rough technically isn't clothing. But you'd have to find a ghostly rough... I don't know. That, 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 that doesn't make any sense either. I really like the outfits Dumbledore wears in the books. So flamboyant and original. I think they should show his personality a lot more. It's true. They're beautifully described. And, and they do sound quite amazing. Obviously, hopefully for the HBO Max thing that they'll, they'll be in there. I think many of us could have take could take some of the pure joy of Den Dennis Creevy. I, I love his reaction to falling into the lake. Absolutely, it seems to be a lot of love for Dennis at this point. Chapter thirteen. Can I have a look at Uranus Lavender? Excuse me, Ron. Absolutely. I know that the ferret is not a real ferret, but yet, but Malfoy. Yet, I feel upset reading the description anyway, and very uncomfortable. Now, that's interesting, Joe, from, from an animal welfare perspective, because I didn't pick up on that. That's very interesting. So, if you'd done it to Malfoy, to Draco, just as Draco, I mean, it would be a lot less bad, wouldn't it? Wow, I, that is a fascinating point. And obviously, you know, you can... Hurting a ferret, seriously, is easier than hurting a, a boy. So, yeah. It's way worse than they showed in, in, in the movie. mad -Eye had a strong entrance and all his scenes so far are written with such intensity. It's true. The fact that they, that they opted so much for humour in that scene in the movie does t kind of really take away the point of it, really, doesn't it? And, uh, and the students find it funny after the fact, but they are immediately laughing when, when Mad-Eye does it, which is... It's not in character, guys. That, that would be, like, a shock to everyone now. Thank you so much for your comment, Joe. Lara! G'day, veggie! Finally joined in, joined and commented. Thank you so much, Lara. Thank you so much for your comment. Sorry, sorry for the wait, by the way. But have been watching your channel from the start of your Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings reactions. Lara, thank you so much. I haven't reread Harry Potter since the seventh, uh, the seventh came out. Read through it for eight hours straight. My goodness, Lara, that's amazing. But your determination to read and share your reactions to these books, despite it taking a lot of time and efforts on your part, has gotten me back into the series. Oh my good, that Lara, that's wonderful. Also, you've got a wonderful icon as well. That's very kind of you to say. Um, it's been great to find things I didn't notice before and hear all the different opinions in the interpretations. Absolutely, it's the best part of doing these. The houses that, uh, that, sorry, the hours that I've happily spent listening to your recaps and the much loved tangents I appreciate the love there, <laughs> have helped me through some hard times and a really uh, real, bu a real bugger of a year. I'm so sorry to hear that, Lara. I, I really am. I, I, I do hope that this year is going to be better for you. I'm sure it will be. I hope it will. No comments to share on these chapters so far. Just wanted to, you to know how much joy and laughter your content brings. Thank you, Lara. Keep calm and waffle on from down under. Thank you, Lara. That's a great. Keep calm and waffle on. It's amazing. I mean, quite frankly, Lara, comments like this mean the absolute world to me as well. And so thank you so much. Uh, you know, times haven't been easy for me, uh, you know, for quite a while now. And so uh, being able to talk with these about the, this stuff to you guys is so helpful to me as well. And so if it can be helpful to anyone else, that means the absolute world to me. Thank you, Lara. I, I really, really appreciate that. Maria. I was very sad that the film didn't include Colin and Dennis Creevy. Colin is in there. Colin is in this movie, I'm pretty certain. But no, yeah, Dennis certainly not. Are the Chamber of Secrets? I thought Colin was in this movie. Okay, we, 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 we'll look into it later. I love their brotherly bond and excitement about w wizarding life as they are muggle-borns. Of course, that makes so much sense. Although a muggle-born not being worried about falling into a lake and then just something pushing him out. My God, in the pouring rain. I hope you enjoy your you enjoy their. Of course, they're muggle-born because the um, basilisk, right? I think. 
I think so, yes, yes. Uh, I hope you, you enjoy their inclusion throughout the series. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to finding more, more about Dennis. And of course, Colin. I also love the throwaway line about nearly headless Nick agreeing with the bloody Baron about the Preve situation. It's one of the only instances where the Gryffindor and Slytherin aren't put, pitted against each other. Very well spotted, Marianne. That's amazing. That's so true. And that, that shouldn't be strange. But that is that is so bizarre. Um, I'm trying to think. Snape and McGonagall must agree at some times. They, no, they absolutely do. I feel like they do get on, actually. Because they like we hear about how Snape's been talking about Quidditch. But, you know, how we're going to win again like, to McGonagall and everything. I do, like, I do feel like that Snape and McGonagall do actually get on. Maybe, maybe. Also, I also love the throwaway line. Oh, da, 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 da. it shows that uh, your Hogwarts house doesn't always define you. Yeah, which does. I, I appreciate you saying that, Marianne, because sometimes I worry that it just does. But I, I, I feel like when we find out that it doesn't, it's actually really rewarding. I really do. Marianne, great comment. Great point about the Slytherin and Gryffindor. That's actually amazing. Uh, this comment has been removed. I don't know if there was a spoiler potentially, but um, uh, I, I hope you, you did then make another comment. We shall see. Um, whoever you were. <laughs> Josh writes, Harry and Ron making up divination predictions is so funny. It was amazing. Speaking of Ron, here again we see how personally... He takes insults about his family. Absolutely. I also have and also how insecure he truly is is important context for a lot of his behavior over the course of the series, especially later in this book. Yes, well, that would make sense going on what I remember from the movie. Absolutely. About his insecurities. It's always so it's always like. It's always nice how, because it has evolved his insecurity around his family, but it is a lot more defensive than it was originally. So yeah, it, it's always it, it's always nice to see how, how it is with, with, with Ron. It's always there, but it's always slightly different, I find. Thank you so much for your comment, Josh. Me here. Hi, Veggie. First time commenting. I thought so. I didn't think I recognised your name. Great icon, by the way. Um, I've been... Following for a while, a couple of book clubs ago, there was a conversation about Fudge potentially being the Minister of Ireland too. I think the fact that there was no Irish minister present at the Quidditch match is implying that Fudge is the Minister of the UK and Ireland. I guess it's possible, but I just feel like that would be such a dodgy thing to put into a child children's book. I really do. It, it's... It's it's a serious subject, you know. Um, maybe may, maybe to people from outside the UK, it, it doesn't seem like that serious a subject. It is, guys. As in, many people have died because of it, uh, like like the North South divide of of Ireland. Um, sure, you can also interpret it another way if you want, because it's very vague. Maybe the Irish minister was simply absent from from perhaps the biggest sporting moment of their country's entire history. This seems unlikely to me, though. Is it definitely the first time that Ireland have won? Or could he spin at the final? I was Weirdly enough, me, I was thinking about that very same question a couple of days ago. I don't know why. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. And you make a good point as well. If it is the first time, then absolutely they should be there. Unless they literally cannot be there for whatever reason. I don't see a problem here, even if Fudge were the Ministry of, Minister of Ireland too. The magical world does not follow the political system of, of the Muggle world. There aren't enough witches and wizards in, in the Irish public to warrant any type of national government. There are barely enough for such an entire, entire British Isles. I don't know. It's st it's still such a sore subject. I'm wondering where you're from, me. I don't know if you mention it. 
Um, or maybe I'm just making a massive deal out of nothing, but it's seriously... You know, it's... No, let, let, let's finish your comment. Not enough witches. This makes even more sense if we look at their school system. Literally all wizard children in the British Isles have been going to the same school, Hogwarts, for over a thousand years. It would be weird if they somehow developed different governments despite that. So what you're saying is that it would have been British, the British Isles and Northern and South Ireland were originally all together. But then, I don't know, I, no, no offence to people from there guys, but I have no idea how old Bulgaria is as, as a country. Although that, that, that school technically isn't Bulgaria there, is it? The Germany one would be interesting because obviously that's made up. Germany is a relatively new country, I believe. I think I, I believe that Germany as a country, no, you know, um, when it was first, was first founded, is actually only a couple of centuries old because it was made up of other countries. I could be wrong there. And it's very interesting hearing, hearing your, your your thoughts on that. Uh, me he me here. Sorry. Um, It'd be interesting to hear. Have they has has Fudge ever been referred to as the British Minister uh, Minister of Magic? Because if he has, then Ireland shouldn't be in there. Because Ireland isn't in Britain. Technically, Northern Ireland isn't either. Because Britain is uh, Scotland, Ale, uh, Wales, and England. Great Britain is including Northern. No, that's the United Kingdom. No, nah, I, I got this order wrong. Yeah, the United Kingdom includes Northern Ireland. Yeah, uh, it's it's food for thought of me here. I just feel like it's still dodgy territory, to be honest, but maybe that's just me. Thank you so much for your comment. How are we doing? Hello, Veggie. This is my first time commenting. I thought so. How are we doing? All these, all these names. In the book club, I started following your Harry Potter uh, journey uh, YouTube reactions and these book reviews and I recently joined the Patreon. Thank you, Harry Do. It's very kind of you. I've been thinking about it for a while, but now that my favourite book of all time is is being covered, I've decided it. That, that's pretty amazing. I mean, a lot of people say it's their favourite part of it, but the favourite book of all time, that's mean. Um, I just recently finished your Patreon Harry Potter Fantastic Beasts reactions. I hope you enjoyed them. I don't really have much to say about these chapters as I'm not reading them currently and I don't remember all the details of what's happened in each chapter apps of course that's understandable hopefully I can say more in the future the only thing I will say is that the hell what the hell was Hagrid thinking with the blast ended squids I know it's absolutely crazy but you know that's our Hagrid I guess isn't it PS you have the only pa you you are the only patron channel I've ever considered joining as it usually not my thing keep up the great content Ravenclaw here how are we doing Th how are we doing thank you so much that's very very kind of you and I, I really appreciate that seriously um your favorite book of all time I mean it, it has been brilliant so far it really has and you know if it carries on on this tra trajectory guys it's probably going to be my favorite Potter book but it is too early to say that though anyway thank you so much for your comments Louisy, Louise, I'm so sorry. It's it's it's. I've, I've never been able to read it. I'm so so sorry. Hey, Veggie, incredibly happy to be back after missing five book reviews. I was I was, th I was thinking actually, it took me about one month to catch up, but I'm finally finally made it. Welcome back. Lovely to see you. It's a mark of a good house elf, isn't it? To to not know it's there. It's such a sad light. It is sad, isn't it? I. But it's like, I guess servants in a way would be the same though as well, wouldn't it? Or, um, valids. Yeah, but it, it definitely, it is sad actually. House of a good. 
it's not like they that is a sh that is a disgrace of their scene because obviously Barty let Winky um, out and everything <laughs> to hold the seat and everything. Hmm. I must admit, when I first read the book, I, I was about 14, I didn't care much about the house elf's rights because as Ron and Nick said, it doesn't seem like they wanted it wanted it apart from Dobby. Yeah, no, Winky really didn't, did she? No. I didn't I don't didn't like the abuse, but thought that it was unnecessary that they uh, unnecessary for them to get paid, for example. Now, 10 years later, I'm very sad for them. They were ri raised like this for countless generations. I, exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's like the fact that they've been conditioned for it. I, that's what I feel like. <laughs> so they're used to it and now feel like uh, it is a dishonor to be treated fairly. It's definitely something in the wizarding world that needs to to be gradually changed. Gradually is the term as well. You're not going to change this overnight. And obviously it's a shock to Hermione. Um, but yeah, the whole food protest thing was never going to work out though. Um, now some smaller things. Hagrid apparently is still not the most prepared... Is still not the most pr prepared teacher at Hogwarts. Oh, absolutely. Even for the first lesson, in fact. Very curious about your thoughts about Quinch being cancelled this year. If you're happy or if you're going to miss it. Well, we had our Quidditch, haven't we? With the World Cup. So, as, as a book reader, I'm okay with it. I feel like... I, I, I'm okay with it as a book reader. I, I, I think that, that it, it's fine to miss out <laughs> this year. OMG, I was not expecting the Uranus choke from Ron. <laughs> Absolutely. Sorry for the long comment. Uh, there was... Much more I wanted to say, but then I would turn into a book review, <laughs> turn into a book review of my comment. Thank you for making these videos. I always enjoy hearing your thoughts, rants, and tangents. Thank you, Lu Lewis. I am so sorry about how I say your name. That's very, very kind of you. Lovely to see you back. And it's very true. In a way, the book club is me me doing a review of the comments in a weird way isn't it great comment thank you so much for making it i hope to see you next time ds hi veggie one of the first one of the first year students was read about during the s sorting ceremony is natalie mcdonald who is sorted into gryffindor natalie mcdonald was a nine-year-old fan of the no novels who were who was dying of terminal, leuke terminal leukemia. During the time Rowling was writing Goblet of Fire, a friend of Natalie's mother wrote to J.K. Rowling publishers. J.K. Um, personally responded, sending Natalie an email detailing the plot of, of Goblet of Fire, which was not published yet. Wow! That's crazy. I'm, I'm surprised even legal. legal. That's, that's amazing. Only to find out that Natalie's mother had, oh, fr from Natalie's mother, that Natalie had passed away shortly after Riss Rollins' email arrived. Oh, dear. Rollins then added Natalie as a character in the book as a tribute. That's a beautiful, beautiful tribute. That really is. Dear, thank you, Diaz. That is a, I mean, it's heartwarming, but heartwarming, but it's heartbreaking. Blimey neck. Email the detail, de detailing the plot of Goblet of Fire. That's crazy. Thank you, DS. That, that's um, that's a very, that's a good. I, I'll be listening out for that name in the future. I don't know if it's going to crop up again, but if, even if it doesn't, that is a really nice tribute. Uh, Martin. Hi, Benji. I would have thought that restricting the competition to sixth, seventh year would work fair fairer than age thing i know this is let's let's continue unless the other schools have different term term dates and age ranges or oh, that could be it that could explain it so that wouldn't be fair either or is goblet of fire a necessary part of the tournament uh, uh, and the age ring is the only way to magically prevent anyone from putting their name in the goblet seems like another mystery, a mystery mess up is that 
isn't the case. I guess it could be. But yeah, I do find the whole fact that there's age thing rather than the, the year. I mean, the thing is, Dumbledore says, like, you know, six or seven, anyone below six or seven probably wouldn't be able to do the things. Then why is it not? Because of what they've been taught, why is it not the years then? But it could be because of the, the different years of the different schools. That's a good point as well. I also love two, two teenagers not doing their homework properly. Very realistic as a inevitable Uranus joke. I know. Yeah, it's uh, in inevitable. Uh, yeah, inevitable is definitely the word for that joke. It really is. Hermione's hunger strike to promote elf rights idea not the smartest she has come up with Pres presume hogwarts doesn't take deliveries from muggle restaurants otherwise she might have used that and ran out of, of money for for a few weeks it's true i guess that that hogsmeade probably has places that aren't run by house elves but um um yeah it was i mean she, she at the same time she is a 14 year old god and she just found this out and she's she's reacting to it you know it's like an instantaneous thing after she's had, had some thought about it she realizes that it's not the most rational way of going about it and you know next day she's um smothering ample amount of jam onto her toast my great comment thank you so much for making it however chapter 12 here we have another example of Fred and George bullying when they harass 11-year-old Malcolm Baddock for the crime of being sorted in slurring. I did say it was out of order. It's, it's not very pleasant. The boy um, the boy has just arrived at Hogwarts. He has spent barely an hour there and he is already being targeted by two Gryffindor boys five years his senior. That does make... He must have been terrified, to be fair. I... I in me putting myself into his shoes. But then again, he, he, may have just, he may not have even noticed. He may not have noticed. That doesn't make what Fred and George are doing any better. Not sure for something he did. Not for something he did. Um, not for something he said. Just because he is slivering. Unfortunately, this is not the, the first example of anti-slivering big, bigotry in the book. Slivering students have a very un... Ev to put an invulnerable position at Hogwarts and they are often treated unfairly. Yeah, and I do find that with people that, that have been sorted into slivering in the book and in the books and in RL have a certain level of pride of that um of that unfairness. It's almost something which they that some of them I do feel like have, Wear with a badge of honour to an extent. It's certainly not fair though. Uh, they are labelled as bad at the age of 11 and treated that way. I wouldn't say that they're, they're, they're labelled as bad. I mean Fred and George are doing it because they're in Slivering. Not because Slivering produces a lot of uh, the most dark wizards. They're doing it because they're the rival uh, rival house. That's what Fred and, Fred and George are reacting to here. Uh, not because they now think that um, Malcolm is bad per se. That's my reading of it. Um, it really is self-fulfilling prophecy when some of them eventually embrace it. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that's also true. Again, the pride. The pride. Um, chapter 13. I don't understand where people find the audacity to criticise Professor Snape's teaching methods when they see nothing wrong with Mad-Eye Moody did to Draco. Has anyone said that they don't find they had to have a problem with it at all? I don't think we've, I've read that in the book club yet. Uh, Professor Snape, do, 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 uh, Moody savagely being a child, fandom, lol, hilarious. Oh, I didn't find it hilarious. It, not not the book version. The, the movie version made it went, went out went out of its way to make it a comical scene. But like I say, I found it quite scary. And to be fair, in in the scene, it did say that there was a terrifying silence when he started doing it. The laughter came after Draco was back to normal. And being walked off to Snape's office. Uh, imagine being a fly on the wall during that scene. Um, uh, uh, the, the following scene. This fandom really is full of double standards. I never liked the character Mad-Eye Moody precisely because of the ferret scene. I can see uh, I can see a lot of people, not just slivering, like, uh, taking a stand at that point against Mad-Eye. I can't believe some people actually find it funny. What exactly is funny about... 
an adult beating up a 14 year old old boy. I don't think many people have actually said that they found it. I think that some people, um, the thing which people seem to be making taking the most humor out of is what Ron said about it after the fact when Draco was back to normal but in the scene like the characters certainly didn't uh, didn't find it funny as it was happening thank you very much Howard. I never ah I don't know if okay I'm gonna read this anyway but I'm not sure if this is I feel like this is meant to be a reply by uh Delia I never found it funny. I don't actually think it was meant to be funny. Partly silly, maybe. But I can see how in that silliness it could be seen as humorous somewhat. I think more... Um, I think more so that it was done to highlight that there was something wrong with Moody. And maybe even as a mi mirror for the reader, the one capable of analysing thought anyway to see whether there's hypocritical he's hypocritical about just this because most people are rightly appalled and outraged over the pure blood prejudice but are then all all sliverings but but are then all sliverings prejudice and not only prejudice but the pr pr punish of the based on nothing more than the assumption. Uh, sorry, that's not, that's a long sentence. <laughs> assumption of who they are based on the schoolhouse they're assigned. Think about this: if Harry had been the ferret, would it still would it, would it still be funny? So I believe that that was a reply to to Howard. So I'm not really sure that if if, uh, if I'll add too much to it. Um. But it, I, I think that it definitely does show that there is something wrong with Moody. I feel like that is the purpose of it. And that's why McGonagall comes along and is absolutely out, outraged by what, what, what he's doing. And so, yeah. Uh, the, uh, thank you very much, Dahlia, for, for, for that. I'm guessing it was meant to be a reply, though. Dracula. This isn't something I ever picked up on until it was pointed out to me recently. But have you ever noticed that September the 1st always seems to be on a Sunday? No. What did you think of the Sorting Hat song? That's, that, that's bizarre, Jacqueline. Oh, because it's the start of the year. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Um, what did you think of the Sorting Hat song? I loved it. Jim Dale's singing of it was amazing. Did you think it would be the same as in the first year? Yeah, I guess I probably did. I probably, I probably did assume that. I didn't even think about it, to be honest. Also, I didn't remember the ferret scene happening so early on. I don't find it funny anymore as an adult, but I definitely remember finding it funny as a seven-year-old. Well, there's the, also that as well, Jacqueline. You, you had an, another a take to uh, Howard's comment. Yeah, I know. I didn't think about the sorting out thing, but I do think I feel like I would have assumed it would have been the same, much like Harry did. In fact, Ron probably did in year. Well, no, not Ron in year three, and Hermione in year two. <laughs> uh, great comment, Jacqueline. Thank you so much for making it. Gothic Lama. Hey, Veggie. Chapter 12. I'm not sure if we dis discussed it already, but are there only eight teachers at Hogwarts? We have Flitwick, Sprout, S Sinistra, Snape on one side of the table. McGonagall, Hagrid, uh, someone, and Moody. Uh, Dumbledore doesn't teach, so he doesn't count. Professor Bins. I was going to say Professor Bins. Trelawney, Madame Hooch are not even mentioned. My questions, my questions are, where are, are, and what are the names of the Muggle student studies, numerology, numerology, ancient ruins, teachers. We got Professor Vector in the the last chapter, but it still this still bothers me. Does Filch and Madame Pomfrey have their own seats at the table? Well, not in the movie because Filch does his weird running thing in the movie, doesn't he? Um, where are you getting the four by four, four on each side thing? Is that how how it's described in this chapter? If so, then, yeah, there are there are tons of people missing. Uh, unless they they, they they unless they take it in shifts, so halfway through the feast, the different teachers change. Maybe mm. 
Don't know about that. Chapter 13. As much as... Oh, hang on. I'm, I skipped a bit. Why didn't Harry dry himself with a spell? He's in school now, so he could use magic. But I guess he really want, really knows only one spell. Ha <laughs> ha. While we're at it, it seems like the sort of thing that Hermione would have done. While we're at it, why did McGonagall try not didn't try all the students? Is is she purposefully keeping them drenched in the rain, like lake water? For for for, for um. Dennis, yes. Um, I can't imagine that's the case, no. Like I say, a charm would be would do wonders. That means you can just go out in the rain and walk in and you'll be completely dry straight after. Uh, if that's how it works. Chapter 13. As much as I'd like Hagrid, he is not fit to be a teacher. I feel like that's fair. I feel like that's fair. If he brings an exploding creature to a lesson, lesson he's teaching, without even mentioning that they do it, he's supposed to know a lot of and share the, the knowledge with students and not use them to figure out the spe this specific creature, what this specific creature eats. That's also fair as well. I guess the explosions with wizards is slightly less dangerous than it would be for muggles, though. It's important to remember that. Again, the exploding letters on Percy's desk. What do you think of Hermione will do about the schoolhouse elves? I'm hoping she talks to someone more level-headed like Dumbledore. I'd love that. I'm not sure if... Um, I can make comments about foreshadowing and plot twists concerning Moody, so I won't d just to be safe. I'd appreciate that if that's okay, Gothic. Uh, anyway, Happy New Year. Thank you so much, Gothic. Great comments. And yeah, when it comes to, to foreshadowing, it's 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 difficult, guys, but um, but so far we, we've done really well. In most book clubs, there, there's never an issue, and so thank you so much, Gothic. Catty! Um, now... Not only more information about the founders of Hogwarts has a large amount. Uh, Hogwarts has a large amount of house elves in the air, in the area. I suppose Hermione never learned about it since she dives into so much information about the castle. But maybe it is not considered important enough to be in the book. I think so, Catty. And also, when it comes to the whole thing of house elves, you know, not being seen is when they're at their best. Not being mentioned goes into that as well. You know. It's messed up, really. I mean, you presume that they probably help them build a place, and maybe I'm not sure. But yeah, I, that's my headcanon for the reason why Hermione wouldn't have learned that in a book, which she she loves her books, as as we all know. Thanks so much for your comment, Connor. Hi, Veggie. I missed it, my chance to comment on the last book club because of the hysteric Chris okay, of the hysteric Christmas. So apologies for that. That's okay, Connor. It's nice to see you back. Here are my thoughts on these chapters. Chapter 12, The Return of Peeves. Always a delight. Connor Creevy's brother being happy to have fallen in the lake. Amazing. Um, interesting that... I wonder if that's going to be a thing where like he's going to like... I don't know. We, we shall see. Interesting that Hermione did not know about the house elves at Hogwarts. Surely it's mentioned in the book she reads. Uh, we, we, I feel like there are reasons potentially why there won't be, but we've gone into that. Um, I like how Dumbledore instantly looked at Fred and George when talking about trying to enter the tournament. I, yeah, I said it during the, my, my notes. They must have so much history. They must do. Maybe even more than Harry, quite frankly. <laughs> my goodness. Um, and of course, Percy would have been. Well, maybe not actually. Maybe I was going to say maybe Percy would have interacted with him a lot as well. No, he would have done, I think. Um, chapter 13 I had forgotten that the ferret scene was so early it's incredibly early compared to the movie isn't it it's it's weird but, um, but then the scene before that is no, it's, but the, 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 the chapter before that is so many other scenes crammed in it's crazy Connor thank you so much for your comment and don't worry about last time nice to see you back uh, Caroline hi Reggie I love divination. Interesting. Oh, the scenes, I guess. Uh, every time it comes up, whether it's it's the class itself, truly, or the homework, I didn't care. I, I don't care what some people might say that she's a bad teacher or that it's an unnecessary subject. To me, it's just hilarious. I completely agree. I, it's it's golden stuff every time. 
and I have so much fun reading these scenes. Try to keep all the prophe pro prophecies in mind. I will attempt to, yes. Last time it was definitely worth doing that in the last book. Oh, and here's a fun fact. Ron's joke are not translated into German. Here we go. So this is like the Russian comment earlier on. Because the wordplay doesn't work. When I read this chapter for the first time in English, it was... It really caught me off guard. I bet. Oh, this is amazing. So that's Germany and Russia. That's amazing. I I sometimes wonder what might have... Might be different or missing in other translations. Well, we covered a few things in the past, quite frankly. And usually they're quite rude things as well. I hope... I hope you have a one ha, had a wonderful Christmas. Best wishes. Thank you so much, Carol. I hope you did too. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Lo, hi Reggie. So much has was happening in these two chapters. Uh, starting off with Hermione getting close like by Professor McGonagall. <laughs> Great turn there, and re and reverse close line as well. Okay, we got we got all the wrestling terms now. I gotta say, guys, I'm currently recording this. The Royal Rumble starts in under five hours. So I need to get through these comments. I'm not rushing them, though. I'm not rushing them, though. But yeah, I will be staying up late tonight to watch Royal Rumble. It is my favorite wrestling event uh, of the year by far. I love WrestleMania as well, guys. But the Royal Rumble, there's always just something so special about it. And quite frankly, I'm no idea who's going to win this time. So good stuff. I love the Royal Rumble, guys. It's good. Um... Uh, it's a specific type of match, by the way. It's basically 30 wrestlers. There's a women's one now as well. So there's 30 men and then 30 women in separate matches. And basically every... Uh, the, the match starts with two wrestlers. And then every 90 seconds, another wrestler is added to it. And then another one. And then another one. And the idea is that you're meant to throw the opponent over the top rope. Uh, and it's just whoever lasts, it's, it's randomly, no, random numbers and everything, and whoever is the last one standing wins it. It's, it's so entertaining to watch with all the different characters and everything. Uh, it's good stuff, it's good stuff. Anyway, back to your comments. I can't help but feel a little sorry for the, for the slivering first years. I, I, I agree. They didn't, they don't exactly receive a warm welcome from the rest of the school, though Malfoy's appearance is, has, has me... Um, eye roll has me eye, eye rolls. That kid really needs a hobby outside of being a slimy brat. He does. Um, yeah. If I were, when I was eleven, guys, and that happened to me, I would have been mortified. I actually would have been. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. It's it, it's interesting, guys. I can't imagine he was going to be defending Fred and George here, but you know, we know that Max is a big fan of Fred and George. <laughs> we shall see though. Um, Hermione's Muggle. Hermione's muggle upbringing mixed with her care of, uh, care, caring nature just doesn't align with the wizard's, wizard's disregard ex or acceptance of the lifestyle of the house elves. Very well summarized. That's brilliant. Uh, they, their different perspectives are, are so apparent here. It's true. It's true. And, that, and that's where I'm currently sitting, guys. And I, I feel like I'm probably going to be there for a while. I, we'll see if it changes. But... Um, the bubble tube pus scene. I can't be the only one whose stomach was rolling over it at the thought of it. Yes, it's very well described. Let's put it that way. Interesting. Given the description of its appearance, that it it's used for treating pimples. It's alludes to the doctrine of signatures that people use to believe in oh like like uh, like leeches and stuff like that meaning that a plant would resemble resemble what that's what it could treat medically oh very interesting lou blooming egg yeah old science that's crazy Anyway, I hope to keep this short, short enough. Happy New Year. You did, Lou. Thank you so much for your comment. That's fascinating about the, the whole old school doctrine thing. That's crazy. There is some, I mean, potions and everything. Obviously, like, um, what's the term? Alchemy and everything like that. It's, it's obviously very old school. Great comment. Greatly appreciated, Lou. Basu, hi Benji. Uh Godric Gryffindor made the sorting hat. It ties, ties up how the hat can ma magically fetch the sword 
for a, a true Gryffindor. Great point. That is the Gryffindor connection there. Portuguese can touch things unlike ghosts. Does that mean Peeves can eat? He, we assume he just wants to make trouble by attending the feast. That's how I say it. Maybe he's just hungry. I act like Peeves if I'm hungry too. Oh, that, that's a fair point as well. So he could be hangry then. So maybe that's where the fry is coming from as well. Because the fry is saying, hey, come on, let's, let, let's, let, let's give him a chance and everything. Maybe he's, maybe he just needs some of those sprouts. Hermione needs to learn um, that activism is pointless with th thread threadbare information about the the the, the target uh, population. I have nothing to say on that because I'd imagine there's going to be more information coming up. Always offends me that the British um, edition uses the word soccer. Does it? Interesting. I mean, I mean that we do sometimes use the word soccer. Wasn't there? Isn't there like a TV show called Soccer FM or something like that? I don't know. I don't watch it, guys. I I, I don't. I find it. I find it annoying. <laughs> I, I I okay. Not that funny. Right? I'm pretty sure I went into it where I, I watch international stuff, but um, there's aspects of of football that frustrate me a bit, to be honest. Rams are no longer in the Super Bowl. Got knocked out by Lions, who are still in. I hope the Lions win. In fact, there must be a game tonight, right? Oh my goodness. I'll have to look it up. Uh, if you don't watch the movies, you'd be wondering why Moody knows about Malfoy and Snape. Yes, well, we have heard that, that, he, that he used to hunt dark wizards. And so, oh yes, Snape, definitely. That's a good point, Basu. That is a very good point. Well made. Thank you so much for your comment. Grace! Hi, Maggie. I wonder if Hogwarts has any child, child safety rules at all. Don't think so. At least one of these first years must have caught hypothermia? From being in the lake. Ah, well, again, can we just get, catch hypothermia? I noticed that the sort of hat uh, is by it, sorting hat is biased against Slytherins. I agree, and called Slytherin uh, them, himself uh, power hungry. Oh, calling him power hungry. Okay, that changes it a bit. Then that does change it a bit. I personally think it is because the hat was originally Gryffindor's. Very true. Who is Slytherin's rival? Also, people booing kids for getting sorted into Slytherin is kind of ironic. You say Slytherins are evil, yet you show them that no one, no other house will accept them. Yeah, it's not good with what Fred and George did, guys. Seriously, it's, it's hard to defend, quite frankly. Not that I would. What do you think a Hogwarts house elf would say if he, if he asked about... It's life. Would it be anything like Dobby or Winky? Well, with, we know they're scared of Peeves, which is not great. Maybe they may, maybe they are treated better here, but we have no reason to believe that at this point, apart from the fact that Dumbledore is headmaster. But we don't know his opinion of house elves. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of this uh, of this chain. To be honest, this this story arc. Of all Hermione's reaction to the Triwizard Tournament was very similar to Hermione's reaction to the House Cup Tournament uh, in a very Potter musical. Oh, really? I can't remember what her reaction was. I can't remember, Grace. I'm going to have to rewatch it. I, I need to rewatch it anyway, but yeah, I need, I need to do that. Last thing, Malfoy is so much meaner in these books. I, I have just never understood... The, the hype around him. He does have his fans, doesn't he? Maybe it is more movie uh, Malfoy rather than book. Super excited for the next Star Kids musical and hope you have a great day. Yes, Grace, thank you so much. Right now, Has Been Hotel has taken president on the channel, but I will be getting back to it uh, when, when I can. So thank you so much, Grace. Very kind, uh, very kind of you to comment. And there's your heart. 
Gary, not Jerry. Hi, Bergie. Did you notice this little detail about nearly headless Nick? Nick was dressed tonight in his usual uh, doublet, but a particularly large reef, which served to a dual purpose of looking extra festive and ensuring his head would wobble too much uh, on his partic uh, part particularly severed head. Does this mean that ghosts can change their clothes? And oh, this is crazy. It's this is this is twisted by melon. This 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 uh, this question. How I always assumed they were stuck in the same clothes they died in. Yeah, me too. And it can't be that they can just change at will because if they could, why wouldn't he always have the reef? So that would suggest that maybe the reef, because he's in his u usual doublet, but the reef is different. But then how would he get a ghost reef? I don't know. It's a great question, Gary. Uh, I Maybe it'll never be answered, but it's certainly food for thought, though. Thank you so much for your comment. Andrew. Hi, Veggie. Been following your videos for a while, but since I'm rereading the books currently, I decided to join in with the book club. You're very welcome. I still have a few videos behind, so I'll see your answer in a few weeks or months. That's awesome. Uh, Andrew, you're not alone there. As people have covered the bigger topics already, I just wanted to give a few brief thoughts on this chapter. Professor McGonagall grabbing Hermione around the neck. Is, is she the third brother of destruction? There's the wrestling term, Kane and uh, Undertaker, guys. Very, very good. I appreciate that. Um, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Them three walking out together. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Two Undertaker's 1998 theme, without the without the without the uh, the words. Uh, that's his best theme. Ba 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 ba. What's that called? Welcome. To... No, it's not. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it's it's his best theme though. 1998, without the without the uh, Latin esque words. Um. Uh, I'm all over the place. I wonder how you visualize Moody. I feel like the book description is brilliant and makes him look more and more ragged and scary. And when I read to read to see someone completely different in, in in the movie version, who I think looks great too, I think he does look great. It's not it's not the difference between Lupin book and movie, is it? But but there, there is definitely a lot of difference. I think the eye being in an actual socket rather than an eye patch is more effective too. Definitely. It definitely makes it definitely more uncanny. My my goodness it does. Maybe it was hard to do the CGI um, for that in the movie. I guess they could get around it and just have like a circular disc around it. You know, just on the eye rather than being an eye patch. But I think that maybe they did it to try and make him look less threatening, quite frankly. For the kids. And finally, this is more of a movie comment, but who the hell is Nigel in, 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 uh, but who the hell is Nigel in Goblet of Fire and, um, uh, Order of the Phoenix, there we go, movies. Why couldn't he just keep Colin and even his brother? They're, they're a really funny double act. But who the hell is Nigel in Goblet of Fire? And I'm not sure. I, I, you know what, Andrew? I'm honestly not sure what you mean. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what you mean by that by, by that one. It's, it's probably because I've been recording for a long time and my brain is frazzled. But, I'm, I'm, but um, why couldn't we have kept Colin and even his, his brother? Oh, a character called Nigel later on. I can't remember. My brain's gone completely blank. Maybe I always thought that Nigel was Colin. Maybe that's what's going on. I feel like that's what's going on. Oh my goody goose, guys. That must be it. Andrew, thank you. I now I now fully understand. Anyway, I just wanted to say I love your Harry Potter content and this is the first Patreon I've ever signed up to. Thank you, Andrew. That's very kind of you. I really appreciate it. It serves as a great 
it serves as great company when I'm working or just going about my day. Thanks. Thank you so much, Andrew. I, I appreciate it. And thank you so much for your first comment. I hope it's the, the first of many. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate that. And it took me a while to work out the Nigel thing. I now realise that maybe Colin isn't in the rest of the movies. Crazy. Thank you so much for your comment. Karen. Hi, Veggie. Sorry I didn't get to comment on the last book club. Dece December is so hectic. You're not alone, Karen. Seriously, I, I feel like I think I've quite, uh, uh, that was the case for quite a few people. It was hectic for me as well, quite frankly. So, I hope you had a good holiday and, and happy new year. During divinations, when Trelawney says Harry was born mid middle of winter, she is wrong. Why do you think she she thought that? Well, now going on that previous comment, I'm thinking that maybe there's something to do with Voldemort be, being uh, you know about the about the house. <laughs> to, to put it in a weird way, maybe. Oh, it was just a random guess. Pardon me for the birth. Also, I can't, I can't not laugh at Malfoy turning into a ferret. It's even, even funnier in the books. Even funnier in the books. I, I, there was something. I think it's the sudden appearance of an adult being, being violent against the student, which is kind of shocking because everyone is like in shock. Whereas in the movie, they immediately start laughing. So it's interesting that you find it funny, though, Karen. But you know. You know, everyone's different. That's what makes this, this, this book reviews uh, awesome. So, thank you so much for your comments. Greatly appreciate Ashley. Hi, Veggie. I love the giant squid. It is apparently both friendly and helpful. That's a good point. I didn't for a second think about the fact that they actually helped them out. I would definitely uh, ju jump in on purpose at some point to get to meet it. Ashley, you're braver than you must be Gryffindor after saying that that's, a, that's that's wild i think this is the first time we we learned what that a ferret isn't just being created out of nothing it is just being transported feast i'm sorry the feast is being transported from the kitchen i ferret i'm sorry House elves explain a lot about the castle, don't they? They, they? In a way, they actually do. That definitely fills in a lot of blanks, because um, there's always going to be blanks at Hogwarts, guys. Uh, but it really does. Also, Sir, Sir Nicholas kind of answered one of the questions about this. He said that the mark of a good house elf is that that you don't see, don't know that they're there. So Ron could have been... In any number of houses, uh, 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 ha ha which had a house elf, but they were doing their job well and never saw them. I feel like guests especially would not see see them. I understand Hermione's reaction again. I wouldn't have been persuaded by Nicholas's description of the situation either. No, nor am I. I, I, I completely agree, Ashley. And yeah. I thank you everyone for holding off on telling me you know, what Nicholas said here because you know in previous book clubs because that does fill in a question which I have been asking before about how common they are but even even when they're around you don't see them great comment Ashley thank you so much for making it Nick writes hey veggie people have covered the big topics already so exactly how much do you think it would cost to attend Hogwarts oh my goodness or is the Ministry of Magic that is covering the cost of all magical education tuition fees. I yes, I presume so because you know, I presume low wage Muggle families could sire. I hate that word. Sire a a a wizard. What happens if they can't afford it? Do they just stay in the Muggle world? Because presume they still get their letter, don't they? Their their invite. Yeah, it must be. It must be backed by the ministry. I, I, that, that, that's, that's, I haven't thought about it, Nick, but that's how I see it from my immediate reaction. Um, how selves like to work? So is it voluntary work or slave labour? I guess you could argue it's technically both in a way, isn't it? But also, Dobby didn't enjoy what he was doing. Winky didn't enjoy what she was doing. So... That's not voluntary, what they were doing. They were forced to do it. So, yeah, I, I, I'd I say the latter, unfortunately. I mean, do slave lab I mean, doing slave labour is being forced to work under certain conditions 
work ex 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 excessive early hour long hours for long periods, not having any days off, not being dressed ethically for, for the work. I mean, I mean, it fits. It, it definitely fits the brief there. Yes, absolutely. But um, I, I guess you could argue there is more to actual slave labor, though. It's a difficult one, Nick, but I'm, I'm currently with Hermione still. Thank you so much for your comment. Stephen, Happy New Year, Veggie and Woozle. Thank you very much. Oh, she's gone, by the way. She went ages ago. Uh, blasted and scrits are, are such a haggard thing to want to raise. Absolutely. And honestly, I'm with Draco on why would they want, want to. What do you think? Th what do you think of them? I think they sound terrifying. Um, I'm certainly not up for, like, you know, stomping on them or everything like that, like Hermione was saying. No, that may be a joke. She can have... Uh, a, can I look at your anus too, Lavender? I remember when I first read this book, uh, and I was shocked that that sort of humour was here. It's one of the things I always remember. I hope it's in the series. It, I, ugh, probably not. Oh, I don't. I, I think it's unlikely. That's a great question, though, Stephen. I think it's unlikely. Unless they get Sid James to play Ron, which obviously they can't because he died in the mid seventies, nineteen seventies. Yeah, I can't see it. I've been reading the Welsh translation of Philosopher's Stone, and this is the name of the houses. Oh, this will be good. Um, I've put them in, in pronunciations below as as well. Thank you very much. Okay. So double L is, isn't it? I believe. Uh, Gryffindor. Chiroral. 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 Oh my goodness. I'm sorry if there's any Welsh. I, I think there actually are as well. I apologize for watching this. Um, Slipping it is... Sl uh, Slavenog, Slavenog. Okay, I don't know what double G is. I don't. I don't, I don't know what the pronunciation double G is. Ravenclaw. Cranranfran, Cranranfran. Oh, okay, I like that one. And my favourite is Hufflepuff. Oh my goodness. Oofty poof, oofty poof, oofty poof, everyone. That's my new. Uh, that's my new. Uh, welcome. I'm gonna start my videos now by saying oofty poof, everyone. I'm ready. I am copying that because I'm I'm definitely saying oof to poof in my videos from now on. Um, but that's I, that is absolutely amazing. Oof to poof. Oof to poof was it? Oof to poof. Okay, not oof to poof. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, wow, Stephen, thank you so much. Those are that, those are amazing. I hope they I hope. The book is is good. I'd imagine it is. That's fantastic. Thanks so much for your comment. It's a nurse thing. Change your name. Hi, Veggie. I was formerly... It's a dance thing. I, don't worry. I worked it out. It's a nurse thing. But since I've just graduated and passed my licensing exam, I thought the new name would be more appropriate. Congratulations. It's a nurse thing. That's fantastic. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts, but I'll try to do the them bullet style to keep uh, it short. It's a nurse thing. That's crazy. What what a great profession to go into. Seriously, that's that's I I I am very proud of you. <laughs> that isn't patronising, but I am. Fun little fact: Fred and George were born on April Fool's Day. Very true. Could 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 that be why they are such big pranksters? In the world of Harry Potter, yes. <laughs> in the world of Harry Potter, that is a possibility. I love how when Neville gets st stuck in the stairs, Harry and Ron don't even think twice about helping him and then d d defending him. Absolutely. Uh, they're used to it, aren't they? Um, I'm fascinated by the blast end scroots. Uh What are they? What do they do? That's the big question. I don't know if it's ever going to pay off. How and... Where did Hagrid get them? That's an interesting question. Because it's obviously something that Hermione doesn't know anything about either. Um, it also fascinates me that Hermione, who is such a strong proponent of House Elf rights, and for that matter, creatures' rights in general, but be Crookshanks 
very good point. I didn't make that connection with them. Would agree with Draco that they should be stamped out despite their dangerous nature. They are still living creatures. It's true. I guess it's the idea of them being so close to Hogwarts, maybe, and the fact that they could be six six foot long. But yeah, it did seem a little bit out there for, for Hermione to be saying that. And I finally, uh, and finally, probably my favourite line in all the all the books. Oh my goodness, this better not be the wrong line, is it? This, this lives, has lived with me for years. Draco, the amazing bouncing ferret. Okay, it says not Ron's line. Oh, yeah, it was Ron's line. The other one, though. Uh, this is not me saying the way he was treated was acceptable. Just think the verbiage, great word, is funny. That's the other take on it as well. It's, it's not necessarily laughing. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I knew, I when I was listening to the scene, I, I thought I knew there's going to be some interesting takes on this. And I, and I appreciate yours. It's a nurse thing. Again, congratulations. Thank you so much for, for your comments. Well, happy 2024, Veggie. Uh, you too. I don't like I don't like Hermione in the movies. I find her annoying and too good at everything. But I adore book Hermione. It is so different, isn't it? I don't hate movie Hermione. There are times now when I've gone through the book and then gone back to scenes and thought, oh, that's a shame that they decided to do that with Hermione. Certainly, that that is definitely the case. Um, here, there. Uh, but Book Hermione is great. Yeah, she was my favorite character from, from the first book. Um, and I do agree with her. House elves are technically slaves. I don't care that they enjoy being slaves. They don't enjoy everything about it, though. This is the thing. That's just what they used to because wizards forced, the, forced it upon them. Did they force it upon them originally, though? They've definitely been conditioned. I, I feel like that's definitely the case. But, you know, maybe it's not as well, though. Well, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, greatly made. Jonas of the side panels, and I haven't changed... You know what? I'm not... I, no, I will. I, I I need to do this properly, Jonas. Sorry that I didn't do it until until now. There we go, book club. Jonas. Hey, Veggie. I'm still very behind on this thing. I did hear that, actually. Uh, that's okay, Jonas. So, I, I'm going to... Just going to say, Boba Tube... Tubers pus sounds weirdly satisfying to collect. Maybe I'm weird. No, in the description it did say that that, that despite the fact that it was disgusting, there was something satisfying about them doing it. it. It said that in the book, so you're not alone at least, or maybe you're you're the only real person who thinks that. But uh, it is on the it is on the pages though. Hope you have a great day and can't wait for your thoughts, even if it's going to take me some time to catch catch up that's okay Jonas take, take your time with it and uh look forward to to, to to see your comments and again thank you so much for the side panels they're always greatly appreciated Kevin Draco Malfoy the amazing pouting ferret lol that will always be one of my favorite lines not just from Ron but in the entire series you're not alone there Kevin it's interesting to hear it didn't stand out to me that much weirdly enough when, when I listened to it but the Finally back to Hogwarts. I love hearing the Sorting Hats new song. It's awesome. It's fun to see how creative JKR had to get with coming up with the whole new song every year. Mm, not every year, but I, I, I get your point. I wish Harry hadn't missed it in the second or third book, uh, third, third years. Would have loved to hear what, what it said. Exactly, yeah, we, we didn't get to hear them in those years. I remember when I first read the book, getting getting just so excited about Harry and all the others were when I heard about the Triwizard Tournament. What it would entail, uh, the fact it's been bigged up so much as well up to this point, um, what the characters would be like, especially hearing from the other schools of magic. This book really was a beginning of opening the world of Harry Potter to the wider world, absolutely, and, and with the World Cup as well. Lastly, I don't know if you caught it, but du but during the divination lessons, Trawley said that she senses Harry's aura and starts talk talking about dark hair, mean mean stature, and tragic loss of life, which technically could apply to Harry, but could it also apply to Voldemort? We're on to the same thoughts here, Karen. Thank you so much. I, that, that, yeah, I, I think you I think you're onto it. I mean, they are very similar. Not very similar. They they are definitely have dovetailed 
for, in, in their stories, haven't they? Uh, in, with, with similarities. Great comment, Kevin. Mortimer. I 100% agree with Moody's punishment method of Malfoy. Turning him into bouncing ferret is appropriate for attacking a, another student from behind. So this is a whole uh, an eye for an eye sort of thing. No, no offense, Moody. There, I guess that's the, that, that's the philosophy here. But from a teacher, um, it is hilarious method too. It's also humiliation as well, which isn't great for a teacher either. Not, not, not to say that some teachers don't use humiliation. It's already for, for time. Draco goes cowardly uh, about dueling Harry. First, he sets up a duel at night that he didn't even show up to. Very true. Oh, that was a trap, though. Instead, snitching on Harry and, and Filch after, after him, first book, starting dueling on two instead of three... Uh, Free during the countdown second book uh, during the lesson yeah and now attacking Harry from behind yeah it's dueling is is interesting he used the word dueling because I don't think he was dueling him I think he's just attacking him which quite frankly is worse isn't it great comment Mordor H ah the introduction of introduction of the younger Cre creevy brother it's so crazy um that's when my previous image of Colin just disappeared, and my brain just started imagining Rod and Todd Flanders um, being at Hogwarts. You know what? That's a good comparison, H. I like it. I like it a lot. I've always looked at slivering buoy. That's a great comparison. I always looked at, at the slivering booing at, as just a bit of fun. Like when you boo people from other sports teams. Yeah. But not, but this, okay, let's read it. Of course, some kids would, wouldn't would like the situation, but it's obvious that they're booing the house more than the specific student, I'd say. For an 11 year old? And and the slurrings are bigging them up at the same time, so there is at least that balance. I think I would actually prefer to be booed rather than to be cheered, to be honest. Professional wrestling again there, guys. <laughs> Works better for my kind of shyness. Oh, now that's interesting. The birthday song, in case I always... My kind of nightmare. It was, was always my kind of nightmare. That's very interesting, H. I, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're all different, that's the thing. I'd say this, though. Fred and George did, did, didn't know what Malcolm was like, though. And so that does make it more serious, in, in, my, in my opinion. But it's great to hear uh, uh, other takes on it. My father is such a fat-shaming, class-shaming kid, isn't he? No, yeah. No wonder Ron uh, wanted no one to speak to him after the whole ferret thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Speaking of Draco, I like how Hermione is defending Hagrid when, even though she is this this specific case actually agrees with Draco it's true that, that's that's is she ain't gonna take Draco's side publicly you know, well, you know in front of him I should say my Malfoy taking the care of magical creatures class is probably just to get more chances to annoy the trio isn't it that's a good point why is Draco in a class where he's clearly Maybe he's after, like, the more exotic, more dangerous creatures. And doesn't want to be doing, like, dealing with these scroots and everything. Great point, H. Greatly appreciate the comment. Darcy. I love getting to see the sorting out ceremony each year. Unfortunately, in the movies, we only see the first one. Yeah, I would have loved to see it as well. But they got to keep, they got to keep these times down, there, don't they? And, and keep things relevant and everything. But it's, it's lovely to hear them, though. I remember seeing lots of memes about how it's a good thing uh, would graduated because he would have not been able to handle Quinch being cancelled for the last year. That would have that would have pushed him over the edge, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, he would have gone nuts. Uh, one change that I am very upset at the movies for is making uh, Bo Barton's an all-girls school. Yeah, I I did assume that would be in the book as well. And Dragma, Drumstrag, an all-boys school. It felt like the films were saying 
there was only one way women should be cho chosen unless we sh she was only complete competing with other women for sport. Having this school being single gender also does doesn't make sense if they are the only schools in the respective country. That's so true. I guess they ne ne not necessarily are, are they? Yeah, I get. I mean, it, I mean, I mean, not not in the books anyway, but in in the movies, you'd have to assume that they'd had to be other ones. Would female witches in in Scandinavia just not have any chance of going to school? Weird choice for the film. Not not a fan. You're right, and I I really appreciate what you say about the the, the idea of what what a, what a girl would have to be, and quite frankly, a man, quite frankly, a boy, I should say. You know, the whole like with a tribal and strength and you know, it's it's yeah, it, it's the stereotypes. It's it's not good, guys. It's not good. Like and um, yeah, I guess it was just to push the whole adolescence thing, you know, even further. Maybe that's the the, the rationale behind it, but. It's not great, though. It's not great. Uh, finally, uh, as unprofessional as it is, and we know why Moody is not the most professional, Malfoy and the Amazing Pouncy Ferret was my favourite thing as a child. I have a feel feeling others may take it very seriously, as with Fred and George pranking Dudley, but we have to remember these books were written for kids and to kids, Kids, a bully getting embarrassed is funny. I see what you're saying, Darcy. I do see what you're saying. Quite frankly, bullies in in like kids shows, especially when I was a kid, at least, were always, you know, for quite often they were the type of kid that would get bullied. But they in the in the thing are, are the bully, you know. Yeah. So I, I do see what you mean, Darcy, and obviously in you know, lots of things, but bullies are are made fun out of in in children's shows. So yeah, I can see that. It reminds me of the humor of Rodal books. Oh now that's interesting. It's not quite as dark as Rodal. Some some Rodal, I should say, but yeah, I can see that, Darcy. Again, great to hear another take on it. Thank you so much for, for making it. Sharice, nice to see you. Hi, Veggie. I didn't really notice when I read the book as a kid, but as an adult, I didn't. Like reading that Fred and George boo booed and hissed at the new um, slivering. I think it is just hissing, to be honest. I think it is. Not that that's any better. Like this is an eleven-year-old who and you, you guys are, are almost seventeen. That the age difference is a big thing for me as well. Imagine being that poor kid getting randomly booed by po popular popular older students. There's the popular part. That is actually a very good point. The fact that they're popular as well. That's actually very true, Cherise. I mean, that's more how I see it. But it's fascinating reading other people's takes on it as well, though. It really is. Um, and, you know, a lot of this person saying that, 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 that they'd rather be booed than cheered. And I think it's, you know, we're all different, guys. But I know that at that age, I would have been mortified by it. Personally. Harry Pothead. Hey, Veggie! Seems like Hagrid didn't learn much from last year. Of course not. <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, if he started his first lesson with Blast and his scripts. Well, they're not as bad as but, uh, as but be, but yeah. A hippogriff, I should say. Um, it's like he he's begging for another incident to happen. You know, uh, it's bad when Hermione agrees with Malfoy. That's actually quite a reflection of Hagrid, actually, isn't it? I wonder what Hermione is so busy with in the library. Oh, okay. You know what? I hadn't for a second thought about that. And I'm going to wipe that from my mind. Because that's interesting. But yeah, I, I actually haven't given that a, a, a thought. Weirdly, despite the fact it was on the pages. Thank you so much for your comments. No snow, snow, snow speeders. Hi, Veggie. So much interesting stuff happening in these two chapters. I will try to keep my points short. First, we find out that there are many house elves working at, uh, secret, uh, in secret at Hogwarts. Not so much secret, but I, I see what you mean. I mean, Nick would have just said, yeah, house elves, if it was a secret, you know. But I do see what you mean, though. I was stunned at first when I read this. I, I thought it was just created by magic. Nice, so did I. Now... It makes logical sense that there would be, would have to be a large workforce to cater for everyone. I apologize about the warning. It's not your comment. 
in a way, it kind of reminds me of Oompa Loompas in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the secret workers that the students don't really know about. That's very true. I, I mean, we're going back to Roald Dahl now, aren't we? Uh, weirdly enough. Um, that's actually a very interesting connection, Snowspeeder. Wow. And I know that their law has been uh, examined more into since, haven't I? There's a little detail in Stephen Fry's audiobook that I, I really like. It's when Draco is reading uh, the newspaper cutting, he pronounces policeman as if it were a word in a foreign language. Such a little detail, but I love it because it shows how disconnected muggles and wizard societies are. Well, earlier on we had, uh, it was Amos, wasn't it, calling calling it, um, Pleaseman. Was it him? It was someone calling him Pleaseman. I think it was him. So yeah, that that's actually a great detail. I did not pick up on that. That's excellent. Um, we also find out briefly why Mad-Eye Moody no longer works for the Ministry. Retired when no no longer able to tell the difference between handshake and attempted murder. There we go. I know that Rita Skeeter tends to blow things out of proportion, but I would have been surprised if this was completely true. Mad Eyes spent so long trying to think like a dark wizard and catch them. It's not a surprise that he would see conspir conspiracy and deceit everywhere. It's almost like a form of PTSD of the brain for him, maybe. No, I, I love that. I think I think that's absolutely... Yeah, he's basically been broken by his job. That's how I see it. Which, you know, which may explain it doesn't justify his re his, his behaviour to, to Malfoy as well. Um, that's very interesting. Well made comment there, Snowspeeder. I just checked the time, guys, uh, just to see how we're going and everything. This can't be right. Apparently we're still under four hours. Because I thought the book club was huge this time. I know that the second chapter, uh, uh, my, my, my review of it was quite short and everything, but can we really be under four, four hours? I'm afraid that I have had to read comments fast and everything. I hope I'm still being able to reply to them, but I, cause I, 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 today, unfortunately, I, I, I need to get going and everything. But um, yeah, that's crazy that we're under four hours. So I hope that I haven't come across as, as rushing, guys. I really hope that I haven't, because um, I definitely want to give your comments time and everything. So... So sorry if I've been, um, if it appears to be, or maybe I've accidentally not pressed record at some point. I d it looks like it's all recorded, so, but under four hours, how's that happened? Either way, there we go, guys. But yeah, that's crazy. So I I'm hoping I haven't accidentally skipped some comments. I don't think I have. Uh, and if I've been rushing the book club, I apologize, guys. Unfortunately, today I've had to do it. So in future, um, we, we, I, I will endeavor to to give your comments more time if you feel like i did rush over them if you do feel like i rushed over them guys let me know because I, I i i shouldn't be doing that especially you guys taking the time to leave comments and everything i definitely shouldn't be rushing over them so if you feel like i kind of did please do let me know in the comments because I, I i need to know because I, I i can't be doing that either way under four hours either way come on the video is going to be under four hours, guys. Going unless I clicked on the wrong thing just now. It looks like that's how it's going to be. Nessie, hi, Mr. Gamer. First time here. I thought it was Nessie. Nessie Bob's guys. Been binging and finally caught up. Nice work. If I may, if I may make an observation about the flashlights in the private drive house in Prison of Azkaban. Oh, okay, this is going back a bit. I always believed they were flashing during Harry's maturing process um, and that the house was glowing, growing, sc grow, growing scared of him. Not sure about the street lamp, though. That's cool. I like that, Nessie. That's an awesome uh, uh, theory. If anyone's interested, s strict before chips is the what free words exact location of where Harry was picked up by the, the the night bus which is just outside Warner Studios oh no way okay so that's not that's crazy blown egg also does, I, I, I never tr done this whole what free words thing I, I've heard of it it's it's oh it's beyond me guys I don't, I don't quite understand it to be honest um also, not sure if you were aware, the main theme of love and the number seven is prevalent in the books and films. Seven Weasley children, Snape saying 
they were spotted. They they spotted seven muggles, seven books, number seven in Harry Potter's in Harry's Quidditch kit. Is he number seven? I I know what I that, that I didn't even notice that if that was the case. Are they even numbered? I guess they must be. Um, I feel like someone's mentioned it before, but that you definitely mentioned a couple there which I've not picked up on though. That's very interesting. To tie it all together, I recently discovered love is scramble. It, it's love in Scrabble has a score of seven. Now, is that a coincidence or is that amazing? That, that, that is amazing if that is a detail that was written in there on purpose, quite frankly. But if not, it's a fantastic coincidence. Blimey heck. Great comment, Nessie. Seriously, I, I appreciate that. And yeah, I certainly... I, how are you being number seven? I feel like that. I'm not sure if that's been mentioned before. Great comment. Oh, you've got another comment here. Banks needed all the help I can get. Oh! It was Prince of Azkaban. Okay, so so it looks like uh, someone has replied to you with something, maybe a spoiler thing, and then you, you re replied here. But I'm guessing you are new to Patreon, maybe, which is fine, which is absolutely fine. But yeah, you can reply to replies uh, by clicking the arrow next to that reply, and then it'll appear underneath it. Nessie, thank you so much for your comments. Love, 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 love to see you here, and nice work catching up as well. I wonder how long it took. I do wonder how long it took. Uh, Carmen. Hey, Reggie. I hope you had some happy holidays and had a well-deserved break. Not too much on the break, unfortunately, Carmen, but I did. I, I, it was a good time, though. I got a pick for Christmas and have been uh, addicted. A oh, PC. I'm sorry. A PC for Christmas. Nice. Very nice. And have been addicted to Hogwarts Legacy ever since. I bet you're further than me. You must be further than me. You must be further than me. Everyone's further than me. On to the chapters. I love the entire Hogwarts with Peeves creating havoc and the Creevy brothers' interactions. I agree. What do you think of the Sorting Hat song? Loved it. And particularly Jim Dale's rendition of it was awesome. Again, the surprise was good as well, though. I was really disappointed that the movie cut out with Bla Bla Blast ended screwed all together. Yeah, I don't know how much they're going to be showing up in this book, but yeah, we, we shall see, though. They sound absolutely terrible. <laughs> Not as bad. I feel like the plants are worse, to be honest. I have to agree Malfoy on this one. It's a t tough pill to swallow, that, isn't it? We're not agreeing with Malfoy. He was, he was vile in these two chapters. I still get so much joy from badass Moody teaching him a lesson. Any ideas why Hermione already hit, hit in the library? No, I, I, I haven't thought of it at all. For some reason, I didn't even give it a second thought. That's crazy. Oh, Troy was a cup, I presume. Yeah, that would that make sense. There must be a lot of books on it. Cameron, thank you so much for your comments. Simon! Titty, titty or not? I'm not sure where that's from. I'm not sure where that's from. Simon always likes to uh, quote things. Oh, it's a film? Oh, is it Frankie Howard? It's Frankie Howard, guys. I, I've never heard him say that before. Well, there you go, guys. Frankie Howard, who appeared in a couple of Carry On movies, as I was saying earlier on. Um... I don't, that's a new one on me. Oh, I see. I, I, what is it that he had another catchphrase as well, didn't he? Oh, he did that a lot. <laughs> anyway, on to your comment. Um, having skipped commenting on the last cl cl club to keep to help keep the Christmas edition short, since the last chapters were almost w world world building. That's fair. Which will probably be some of the best con con content for you. Oh, I love the world building. It's always an absolute joy. How do you f like finally meeting mad -Eye, And do you imagine him different in the film? Well, I mean, the eye patch thing is, is obviously the big change and everything. Right now in my head, it is... You know, Mad Eye from, from the books, but from the movies. But yeah, it it generally is a gradual thing for me to be able to blank out that character and just see the the, the character from the book. If you know what I mean. Um, I have to say, it's strange when I read these books, as 
even though I was in was was at in my my in my twenties when they came out, I put I must put my brain in a child mode when reading them, as I still find his punishment method a great as great even though everything about them screams, uh, I'm a bad guy. It's true. It's so interesting hearing other people's opinions on the Mad Eye, Mad Eye moment. And I felt it coming, guys. I did feel like it would be a big discussion point here. And other people bringing up Fred and George hissing the other shoe. And I, I appreciate people who brought that up, guys. I actually do. Because um, it did... It, it, I, I, I want to like Fred and George. I wouldn't like them if they did that and I was present, you know? Hmm. Anyway, great stuff, Simon. I appreciate your comments and great with the quote there. I didn't get that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, Daniel, to round us off, well, I will do a quick refresh just in case if anyone's commented since. But Daniel says, hey, Veggie, I haven't commented in some time, but I just wanted to say I actually really enjoy it when you express your opinions boldly, regardless if they they misinformed or anything like that. Daniel, Thank you for that comment. That, I believe, is a reaction to the video which I posted yesterday, guys. When, when you're watching this. Well, when, when this is posted, I should say. Um, basically saying that I'm a little bit... The whole Molly thing about her sending food and everything, guys, has been playing on my mind. Because I got the wrong end of the stick there. I really did. And I felt bad about it. But also, middle of Prince of Azkaban, my attitude toward the, towards Quidditch matches, my attitude between Harry and everything was really bad, guys. I, I, I feel like it probably did affect the video. So I appreciate that comment, Daniel. Uh, I really do. Uh, but yeah, I do feel like I need to change my approach in somewhat. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick refresh. Yep, we got one more comment, guys. So I will uh, close this off after this. But Emma says, Hi, Veggie. I'm going to make a very vegan comment here. Hermione admitting she defended the blasted ended scripts only to protect Hagrid uh, and said they should be killed. She outsmarted Draco during the, the class. Very true. But actually, I don't fully agree with her. I do think a living being has to serve a purpose or be or be of use to humans to, to, to deserve life. I don't... You don't think. Sorry. I don't think that... I, I completely agree with you, Emma. Absolutely. Uh, maybe she was being hyperbolic. I, I let's let's hope that she was being hyper hyperbolic about stamping them out. Just take them back to the, their original habitat. What's wrong with that? Anyway, uh, the points she made were very captive, capitalistic, and uh, speciesist even. Yeah, yeah. Again, I hope that she's being hyperbolic. It does seem different from her. Another thing, I can relate to Hermione's uh, initial shock, disbelief, and disgust when she learned where the food com comes from. I'm assuming you've experienced this as well. I know I have. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's it's. But it's about making things better, though. And going in there too hard. I mean, guys, my, my YouTube channel is called Veggie Gamer. I think you'll agree. I have never preached veganism. I've never said that you should you should be vegan. I've, I've never even said that you should you should, you should try it. You, it. It's for me. If it's something that you want to do, then then do it. And I feel like that is the best approach to this sort of thing. Whereas, you know, the food the food strike and everything is so reactionary, and it was it was a reaction to a moment. But yeah, I I have felt like that as well, Emma. Uh, one last. Qu one last quick thing. The Uranus joke is kind of funny, especially when you read it as a, a child, although the joke was not in in translation in the Finnish book either. What's going on? The Finnish, German and the Russian one. But it was also verbal sexual harassment. It's it's not OK. It's not an OK joke. I, I think I said that in, in my notes. It's like, you know, sure, but it is inappropriate. Ah, there we go. It's, in, in, it's certainly inappropriate. It really is. Um, yeah. Do, 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 do. I wonder how Lavender, 14-year-old girl, felt. Embarrassed, maybe? Probably. We didn't really get to hear, did we? But I guess, you know, the viewpoint of Harry is he just found the joke funny. He didn't really notice, like, anyone 
anyone's reaction to it and everything. So I do feel like it's inappropriate as well. But yeah, it's just like such a stock joke. And someone always has to say it when the when the blooming planet is mentioned. Um, not to excuse her, of course. I do feel like it's inappropriate. Um, I love the Creevy brothers. They're so supportive and proud of each other. I'm, I've only just met them, but I'm already enjoying them. Um, I hope this comment doesn't come across as too serious. Oh, no, it absolutely didn't, Emma. No, that, I'm, I'm the same. That's why I, I don't... Oh, uh, yeah, I do see a problem with it. It's, it's not like Ron should be kicked out of school or anything for it, though, you know, in my opinion. Uh, P.S. I just watched the short video you post. You just posted. You might be putting too much pressure on yourself. Please know that you are a treasure and I admire you immensely. That is so kind. You've already got replies, Emma. That was only three hours ago. Thank you, Emma. That's very, very kind of you. I, I really, really appreciate your, your kind words. Um, I'm always... I've always been hyper critical of my of my YouTube stuff because I want it to be better. I want it to be more accessible to people and I want people to enjoy it. I, my, my worst fear is like people watch my videos and they feel worse about themselves. Long ago, guys, there was a video game which I posted on the channel and it was quite a, a, it's a bit sleazy video game, but it was done from like an ironic way. It was a parody game. And I posted the like I think three videos on it, and those three videos I think even now are my most popular videos, most watched videos of all time. But they have been uh, I I I made them private six seven years ago, because the vast majority of the, of the comments I was getting were like fi finding like the whole parody of it very very funny. But then I was getting comments from you know young women and and so on like saying well this, this kind of degrading as well and. I don't want people to feel bad uh, about wh when they watch my stuff, guys. And so I, I made them private and everything. And so it certainly is not something which I'd ever want to do. Um, it was, a, it, it, like I say, it was a parody, but in a in a sleazy way. Obviously, it was okay to post on YouTube. I don't, it wasn't like full frontal nudity or anything, guys. But it was, it was objectifying, I guess, is the best way of putting it. And I don't want people to come to my channel to, and feel worse about themselves because of my stupid videos. And so... I'm always trying to learn and improve, guys. And so I that that's why I felt the need to put that video out. And so thank you, Emma. That's very, very kind of you to, to, to put in that way. Uh, and that is the last comment, guys. So I will go and close this off now. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we are... I think we are under, five, uh, under uh, four hours, which is insane. Again, if I did rush through the book club, guys, I am so, so sorry. And I will endeavour to not do that in the future. Um... So yeah, I hope that I gave all your comments a, a fair a fair time of it because quite frankly, I, I really appreciate you guys being a part of this. It's a huge part of this book club. Uh, so I'm going to end it there, guys. Royal Rumble starting in like under four hours. So I need to go and get sorted for that anyway. Uh, please don't come subscribe or look us up. I'm Virgie Gamer and I'll see you next time.